and we also invite everyone to uh, join Frank DeLuca as he leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, I thought you wanted me to sing. That comes later. later. <laughs> I pledge well, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I'd like to turn the meeting back over to Tim. Now, now, Frank has requested an opportunity to sing for us, God Bless America. Is that right, Frank? <laughs> In my next slide. <laughs> In the next slide, okay. And now for our member introduction with Ms. LeBranch. Stephen LeBranch. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Representative. David Mara. Bob Ladd, Village District Representative. Mike Wolf. My name is Jones. Brian Warburton. Frank DeLuca, School Board Representative. Brian Lapham. Excellent. And we have a bunch of very important people with us tonight, so let us proceed with the meeting. Uh, old business. Uh, Regina, we have an action item on NHMA. You want to report on that, please? Yes. I spoke with NHMA directly. Uh, I spoke with Judy Silver's assistant at first, and then I did talk to Judy Silver later, but I wanted to inform the board that all the motions made last time, as we discussed, still stand. There was nothing new done. And also, NHMA does have a procedure in place already that when anyone from the town contacts them, they will, with their response, also uh, copy the town council or I'll at least let the town council know that the request has been made to keep him on board with uh -huh. any questions that are legal opinions so or we legal are, advice. So we are to consider that the NHMA has been officially notified as to the Board of Selectmen's decision on the protocol, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. And does that no longer need to be on old business, thank God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> HamptonBud.com, I want to remind you that we're keeping our uh, upcoming meeting schedule there along with some other uh, useful information and it's getting more and more information as, as uh, we progress. Uh, but always reference the schedule on HamptonBud.com if you want to know uh, the latest stuff. We did have a date change uh, as a result of uh, a request that we yield on the uh, public hearing snow date of January 17th, uh, and so I did yield to that, and we changed that date to Friday, January 18th. And I'll remind you that it's merely a snow date. It's already reflected on HamptonBud.com, um, and so uh, we'll talk more on that if we need to later. I assume no one has any violent objection over that. Great. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, sir. Can I make one comment about HamptonBud.com? Sure. Um, you sent to me and I believe all of the members here in this um, committee snippets regarding the agenda for tonight and I just want to mention how helpful I found that. Oh, thank to, you. To watch those snippets um, regarding the police and the fire and, um, and to review what was said at the selectmen's meeting. Big, big help. Thank you very much. Great. It's great to hear. Thank you. I would second what Stephen just said. I thought they were quite beneficial. Oh, great. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. <coughs> uh, most, much of that work in assembling that was actually uh, part of a facility that I'm developing on HamptonBud.com. So about 60% of that work behind that was actually automated uh, beyond the creation of the SIP itself. Um, so I get further down the line, hopefully I'll get that more fully automated. You guys will be able to do your own versions of um, topics, but we'll talk more about that at another time. Okay, um, budget workshops. We begin our wonderful budget workshop season, which we're all happy to lose sleepless nights reading all these numbers and wonderful stuff. Uh, but I wanted to talk about the process review that we're going to use uh, during the budget workshops. Um, and this will culminate in a final review with regard to the town's budget. It will culminate in final review in January, as you'll find on the schedule on HamptonBud.com. Now, I've spoken with Christy, um, I think in, in detail, I think we're in agreement that uh, while we've, she's done a great job this year's budget book. She's done great improvements on this budget book in terms of its format. As you know, we have this kind of disconnect between municipal accounts and DRA accounts. When we submit and sign the documents to send to DRA, all those numbers are reflecting a DRA chart of accounts. But <clears throat> And it makes complete sense that management has a different way of managing these things, and those are under things called the municipal chart of accounts. Uh, there's no, nothing wrong with that. It's probably the right thing to do. It's done by most organizations. 
you have a reporting entity that you report to under one chart of accounts and a different operational set of chart of accounts. So nothing unusual. But we do have to uh, sign the document based on the DRA chart of accounts. So the question that we've been dealing with for the last couple of years now is how best to manage that. And this year, what we've decided to do, I believe, Christy, we are in agreement that Christy, as usual, is going to uh, maintain uh, uh, a record of any amendments we make uh, to these budget numbers. And she will subsequently roll that up so that we have a separate document uh, of DRA, or based on the DRA chart of accounts in January when we do our final review. So we need not worry. We can talk either DRA chart of accounts or municipal chart of accounts. I suspect we'll talk municipal chart of accounts because both people's paradigms are in the municipal chart of accounts, okay? Now, to further that effort, I think what we ought to do is simply move all of the um, uh, existing uh, board of selectmen line items uh, and move them into, uh, or have Christy assume they're all there and so she can update the DRA chart of accounts or line items, right, at, at, her, at her leisure. And thus, we will not have to make individual motions, for example, with the police and the fire, et cetera, unless we want to make amendments. So we'll entertain amendments as they occur throughout the budget process, but we do not have to make individual motions, except for on amendments themselves. I assume we're in agreement with that, okay with that, everybody? Yes. Yeah. Great. Yes. Okay. And as you know, at final review time, and, and as I mentioned before, when we do the final review, we're going to have one vote to pass a number to put on the warrant article, and then the separate vote to actually recommend or not recommend uh, that number to the voters. Okay? So with that, we are all set. Question. Okay, go ahead, Brian. This seems to be a little different process than we've done for the last that 30 years. That is correct. There's an improved okay. process, I hope. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but let me ask. I want to be clear on what we're doing here. Sure. Because already I feel rushed tonight. With the taxpayers were just given a $1.4 million proposed increase. If I have, and I'll use Chief Sawyer's budget, for example, if on... January 6, I decide I want to amend the police budget. To your point, you just said we're going to do one final number. Can I make amendment at that time to increase or de decrease as we always had? We reviewed budgets for years. It wasn't just one night and came. Well, there might be questions I'll have after tonight for both the fire department and the police. They may come up in two or three weeks. So how does that work? Okay. You can make amendments tonight. You can make amendments at our next meeting or the subsequent meeting. Uh, whenever you feel it's appropriate for that amendment, all the way up to and including okay. the meeting of the final review. Just so you know yep. that at the final review time, I intend to uh, ask for amendments of a larger nature first and then go, go lower and lower. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll ask for, for example, changes that are, uh, affect the budget for a million or more, and then after we deal with that, we'll, we'll deal with amendments that are changes that affect the bottom line, 100,000 or more, <coughs> and then we'll deal with the remainder of amendments if there are any. So is the process still going to be, for instance, we have Chief Ayotte and Deputy Chief Kennedy, we're going to go through each section of the budget and go around to see if anybody has any comments on that? Christine is going to do an overview on the fire department right now. Okay. Uh, and this will be a good example. So she's going to do an overview on the fire department right now. And when she concludes, uh, I will open it up for questions. You can ask anybody that's here. Uh, and then when we're done with the questions, uh, I will bring it back to the committee for any discussion or amendments that we may want to have. After that, we will thank the people for coming in and deal with any follow-up items that may have arisen. I, Does that make sense? No. Okay. I don't understand why we don't go to each section. When you say anybody has any questions, it's like let's spend 30 minutes and go home. Well, this is oh, a, I'm not preventing you going. If you well, want to go by section, that's fine. I think we. Well, that's always been the. I mean, that's what we used to do, and it worked out fine because we're. We are now, the budget committee has the budget. It's no longer the selectmen's budget. It's the budget committee's budget, right? So my question is, why would we not want to take our time? And there may not be a lot of questions or changes, but I think for, to say, have, and it's unheard, that of, it's unheard of that a finance director would do a presentation of a department's budget. That's just unheard of. So that being the case, I well, may let have... Me, let me, let me, uh, Christy is going to do an overview. Well, that, all right, well, your word, overview. A summary, a summary, if you will. Is that right, Christy? She's going to do a summary so we have a big picture of the, the fire department's budget in this case. Okay. But then, then we'll go down into the details as the committee wishes. Now, if the committee wishes to go line item by line item, that's what we'll do. If the committee wishes to go sub-line item by sub-line item, that's what we'll do. 
I, I really am open to that. It well, doesn't matter to me. I, I guess the other problem I'm having, we watch monthly reports, which Chief Ayok comes in, does a terrific, I, I watch all the meetings. These snippets you sent were fine, but if I would urge everybody, watch the meetings and don't right. wait till the night before to go right. to the snippets. Chief Sawyer comes in and Deputy Hobbs, and they do a wonderful job pre uh, preparing the budgets. So why are we having, and, and it's not to slight Christie, she did a great job preparing this. Why are we having the finance director give an overview on anything? <laughs> We've got our department's heads here. Why don't we, does that make sense, Mike? I mean, it was never like this. I don't, I don't get it. Well, it's, it's different than what we always did. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, we, we've got some serious questions to ask. You're going to have a finance director do a presentation, and then we're going to say anybody have any questions, which Chief Ayotte and Deputy Chief Kenny are going to answer. This chief seems to me that it's a redundancy in what we're here for. I mean, we've got, there's, there's a lot of uh, material in this budget, and as, as people I talked to have said, we hope that we deliberate in a fashion that is going to go by, my, and believe me, I'll go by the budget committee vote, whatever you want to yeah, do. Right. I, say, I say we go by each section after each, you know, as we did as Mike Clough used to do, I'll make a motion to, to move the first section, yeah. I second, anybody have to go around the table. And it may not be anything, but at least the public knows which section we're working on versus saying, let's just ask, oh, anybody have any questions on a $3.8 million budget? Yeah. I mean, I, I just, does that make sense, Frank? Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBranch. Hold, hold on, Please. hold on. I've got Mr. the floor. LeBranch. Okay, I've got the floor. Um, Brian, you say you watch all the meetings. You, I guess you didn't watch them last year or the year before. The way that you're talking about doing it is the way we did it five years ago. Mm. Okay, we did line by line by line, and then Eileen would ask each person, do you have something to say, do you have something to say? We modified that a couple of years ago. We don't do it that way anymore. Okay, so you haven't watched the meetings in the last couple no, of years. I talked because about the selectmen. Well, first of all, just because you said we don't do it that way, right. doesn't mean I'm it's not right. Finished. Okay. I'm not finished. Doesn't okay. mean it's right. I'm not finished. Okay. This is an evolutionary process, and over the last couple of years, this board and everybody that's sitting here, excluding you and Frank, because you weren't here, but this is we've made some changes in the last couple okay. of years, and for the better. And as a matter of fact, I also want to add, see, there was a time several years ago when this meeting would go until 11 o'clock. There was one time it went to 12 o'clock. We don't do that. <laughs> Our objective is to try to move things along a little bit. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're having this process review talk among us, but everybody that's on this board except you and Frank that weren't here over the last couple of years, um, we've modified. It's, it, it's evolved, and it's really been a wonderful process, and we still get all of the If you have anybody has a question, they can make the question. You want to make a change, you can make a motion, and perhaps it'll happen. And that's, so you're not being restricted in any way. But as far as going through each line as if we've never seen a budget well, before I, in our lives. I think we, I think we can do something that, that achieves both objectives. Well, let, me, let, me, let me offer this. And I'll use the Can fire, I comment on that because a very important point. I'll use point. the fire department as an example. Um, I think we've got categories within the fire department, for example, administration, fire suppression, fire prevention. These categories, we can go category by category within the fire department. Is, would that be okay? I want to I want to uh, stick with my initial thing, but I want to comment to Mr. LeBranch. Um, I have watched all the meetings, but the interesting thing, Steve, it's because the way things have changed that the voters haven't approved budgets. Because they, I wouldn't agree with that. Well, hello. I mean, there's no discussion. <coughs> so what I'm saying to you is you chaired last year. He's chairing this year. Who knows? Everybody, you say everything's changed. Well, guess what? That's part of the problem. We've got to have voices that have come back into the fray, right? that know how the things used to be run right. And all I'm saying is, I, want, I don't want to just say, let's move on with the fire department and let's, forget the, uh, let's just keep the process the way it is. I want to vote by this committee. If you want to keep the process the same, then vote on it. Nobody has said that we're going to do what you just said. Nobody has said that. That isn't what Tim said, OK? And that's not what I said, OK? So just to be clear. Regina. Yes, Mr. Chairman, how about, I think one, first of all, I want to say the overview is very good. Because, for example, the fire department, okay? So let's look. The fire department has a 5 point something percent increase. 
Okay? Wages make up a $3.3 million, okay? Whether we like it or not, nothing can be done with that, okay? If we vote on default, guess what? That's still going to be there. Mm -hmm. So this, I think, is giving additional information not only to us but to the viewers, and it's done very nicely in slides and pie charts that might make people understand it a little bit more or be able to direct their questions in a better way to me or anyone on the budget committee. And I have no problem going line by line item or by section, whatever the budget committee wishes. But I don't think that, I think that Christie's, Christie's information that she's gonna provide, that she also provided to the Board of Selectmen, is additional information put in a much simpler way for people be, to be able to review faster okay. and more conveniently. Let me, let me comment on that. I think that we're going to have Christy do the overview under any condition, uh, because even under Brian's proposal, we're going to yield to the fire chief. And the fire chief will very well likely, and I suspect he will, say, I'd like to have Christy do an overview and let her proceed. So I don't think that's really an issue. Uh, the real issue on the table is whether we go section by section or line by line, I think. And if Brian is insistent on going line by line, is that right, Brian? I said each section. Section, oh, section that, by section. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You make a motion in the seconds. I don't think we have a problem with the section by section, right? But there may be things within that section we stop and talk about. That's what I'm <coughs> yeah, then that's fine. And that's fine. And, and, and we don't need to make a motion because we already talked about how we're just going to make amendments as they may arise, okay? okay? All right, so we're in agreement and we're going to go section by section, right? Okay. Yeah. And, and we're going to allow amendments and on each section, which can be made tonight or subsequently all the way up to Final review time. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Yeah. The, the thing that uh, I want to just go a little bit deeper with what uh, Regina just said, this, this information from Christie allows us well, to look. Well, we're already okay no, wait, wait, wait. Allows us to simply look. You've got four, basically four categories here. And as Regina pointed out, wages, utilities, gasoline and diesel, we can talk about them until the cows come home, but those things can't, we can't change because right. they're going to be in the default right. budget right. one way or the other. The one thing that I would say items not categorized account for 0.83 percent. That would be something that you can say. What is you know what are you buying? Uh, some new this, some new that. You know that is something that I guess you could make a change because it wouldn't. But the the things that the union raises and the, which are the wages. Uh, your utilities, your gasoline and stuff. There's only so much you can do with that. You can cut the gasoline account, but they still need gas at the end of the day. And as you know, Christy usually comes up with a number, you know, later on in the Well, as far process. as gas is concerned, that's on the meeting schedule in December for review. Right, um, and that's so something that's that not we, something we usually really need to worry about. need to do a, a line <coughs> item tonight. We'll talk do about. a detailed review of gas in, in December. I'm very well aware. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's another so modification. We're going to do section by section, right? right? And we're all happy with but that. I just want to make one more comment sure. on the wages, which Mr. LeBranch is incorrect. Well, we're going to get into the wages. Well, no, but this is for the public at home. The selectmen made a change in the wages already, in a good way, for the two elected officials that were coming forth with double because they didn't get their raise last year. But the thing I want you all to think about, which is going to be in my mind where you're incorrect about wages we can't do anything with, the elected officials, this budget as it stands now is not going to pass. It's not. And if it doesn't pass, the elected officials don't get their raise, but because of your municipal resources study, the non-union folks, we just seem to gonna find a way to get it in the fall budget. That's the discussion that the taxpayers wanna hear about. So when you say we can't do anything about wages, we absolutely are gonna discuss wages. This is the thing I've watched last week. Let's just, so that's a very critical point on default budget and what happens, because we saw it when we created an HR director's position. We saw it when raises were given last year that were not part of the default budget. We found the money. So when you sit here and say wages, we nothing we can do about, there's going to be some discussion in this room on TV for our taxpayers that pay the bill too. Good. And you know what, Hold Brian, on you might Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I understand you're making a broad sweeping statement on wages. It's true. And, you, and, and there's, there's deep concern about that. Yeah. Um, and it may be that we actually speak about the broad wages uh, in 
in a meeting, a subsequent meeting. Where Great, we, thank okay? you. I, that's what I wanted to do, an assembly okay. meeting. So thank I'll, you. I'll look for an appropriate time in December to do that. Well, in December. We December. Well, for the broad one. We're going to go into the details. When the town manager comes in with the administrative part, I may have some issues on wages. Oh, no, you're still okay. free to talk about those, okay. those particular ones in category, but All right. in terms of the broad sweep. Okay, well, we'll see as we go right. along, but okay. I just want to make right. that statement. So we will be dealing with that. Yes, Mr. DeLuca. <laughs> Okay. To answer your question, okay. What did I, did I have well, a question? You took a shot at me, so I'm going to respond oh, to you. I did. Uh, I didn't hear directly. You did. All right. So listen. This is. I saw this budget. I like the overview. I think you did an excellent job. It spells out things. I'm all for moving things quickly. All right. So the line by line, I'm, I can understand Brian's situation, but I like the budget the way it's presented here. Now we can look into it in detail. And I've worked on budgets before, far greater than this number, okay, in the private sector. So I understand budgets. All right, so we're doing section by section. That's and I have as well. Line by line, and we're going to, uh, Stephen, hold on now. Everything's been okay. said. We don't need to be yeah. redundant. <coughs> okay, so we're all done with Mr. Uh, Moore. For the past couple of years since I've been here, we've had two different processes. Now we're going into a third process. That's right. My biggest complaint that I had going back two years ago and brought it up again next year, last year, and it was overruled, is still standing and I've mentioned it to you. And it hasn't even been addressed tonight. And that is normally when I first came here, we would go around a line of a particular department and then the chairperson at the time would take a vote. We're not doing that. Well, that hasn't been mentioned yet. I did. I said it right up front. We're not going to be voting unless there's an amendment put forth. So then we will vote on that amendment. I want to make perfectly clear that what that is clear. and is not. So if you get into the line items, we're not going to vote on them. And last year we voted again at the time, and they all of a sudden we were locked in. So when we got to the January meeting, everything basically got rushed through. And if, you, if something lost 7 to 2, and you were on the two, you couldn't even vote for it unless you're on the other well, side. Well, that won't be an issue since we're not voting on anything but amendments, right? Good. I just wanted so to validate that. it was wasn't it? I, I did take your concern into consideration, okay? I would and it's a valid concern. That? It's a valid concern. Thank you. I would move that. Mr. Lass. I'd like to move we start the meeting now. Yes, oh, we're getting there. We're I getting agree. There. <laughs> okay. Can we move forward? So, uh, I believe Christy is chopping at the bit to give us an overview of the fire department. Is I that right, Christy? I was going to go home. <laughs> 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 no, no, you're getting ready to pack up and leave. I don't blame you, Christy. Do you think, Christy? <laughs> All right, so the fire department, their total budget is $3,865,302, which is $210,847, or 5.77% greater than the 2018 default budget. Wages make up $3,346,614, or 86.58% of the budget. Gas and diesel makes up $18,014, or 0.47%. Utilities make up $96,282, or 2.49%, and items not categorized make up $404,393, or 10.46%. The next slide just gives you a breakdown of all of those numbers that I just went over for you, showing you where they all um, stand in regards to the total budget. The breakdown of the 5.77% increase, wages account for $172,488, or 4.72%. Items not categorized account for $30,485, or 0.83%. Utilities account for $6,050, or 0.17%. And gasoline and diesel account for $1,825, or 0.05%. And then the last slide shows you the breakdown of the 5.77 wages in the large blue circle there. That's the okay. Five uh, just so you know, Christy has an overall budget uh, summary, which I, 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 since we already had one via the video snippet, I asked to put that off until next meeting when we do TP door. You'll do the overall at that point. Thank you. But I did observe from that, Christy, that. Uh, when I added the benefits and the wages together, they came up to basically 50% of the total budget, right? Yeah. So you, you, the point on wages, Brian, is very sensitive to everyone, and rightfully so. It's half the budget, essentially, yes. the overall budget. So with that, uh, I believe Regina wants the floor, so Ms. Bonds, please regale us. Thank you. 
Christy, out of the $172,488, how much of that is contractual, do you know? The majority, because there's only one position in the fire department that's not um, part of the collective bargaining agreement. Right, and how much did we give, uh, it's the chief, right? Mm -hmm. How much did we give him for raise this year? I believe it was <coughs> 1.8, whatever the board approved, I don't have that number with. Oh, okay, but it was, five. okay. But it was, it was the uh, normal was, that we gave yes. across the board to the merit, to the merit line, yes. So that's the only thing that is not contractual? Yes. Okay. Okay, are there any questions for Christy or, the, or anyone else in the room? Mr. Lapham. Yes. Um, oh, let's go section by section like we promised. I'm sorry. Section by section. Oh, well, I'm going section by section. All right, so we're under uh, administration first, right? Yeah. Are there any questions I'm on... I'm just going by the budget breakdown to start with. What is... Could you explain <coughs> other items? Oh, the presentation, you mean? Yeah. Things that yeah. didn't fall under um, any of, the, of those categories there. So it would be things like repairs and maintenance, vehicle maintenance, supplies and expenses, um, what else is the new equipment, replacement equipment. Now, wouldn't that be on a tone line? It is. Well, it's not a line item. It's just a pie chart. And what she's saying there is, She's got a, a, a legend there, wages, gas and diesel, utilities. If it wasn't one of those three, it falls under items not categorized. So yeah. she just created those. Well, well, that's, that's just, what I was that's just, just for the presentation, it's not for the budget. On yeah, that's all it is. What is well, we're going to get into that section by section. Four, three, nine, three. We're going to get into that section by section, okay? So, so that will be across the budget. It will be like yeah. on your repairs and maintenance lines or your... Supplies and expenses across the budget in those sections. Okay, so now we're moving on to the section known as administration. Are there any questions or comments on administration of the fire department? I see the, uh, Mr. Chairman, we're going to raise our hands. Yes. Okay. Uh, Chief A. Diesel is up 35 percent. Yes, sir. Is that just that's yeah, and these are the numbers that Christy uses to, right, to yeah. calculate. Yeah, we use the price per gallon that the town is okay. getting out of the WEX account. And I, I don't, don't note that that's subject to further adjustment in December. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. It's, I don't also, have it's also based on our average use, mm -hmm. so Christy mm -hmm. does those numbers. Mr. LaBranche. Um, <clears throat> I want to just mention yes. something yes. That, right. that you already Should mentioned. Fun. Actually, Regina yes. asked you this question at the Board of Selections meeting. This is based on... Uh, the, the overall, the budget for the fire department is based on staffing that remains the same as it has been, which is eight. Eight so, on. Thank you for and then, and then, could you explain, just Certainly put can. a little bit of explanation about that? So currently, we are staffed with uh, 36 on-duty firefighters, uh, chief, deputy, EMS officer, fire prevention officer, four um, uh, fire alarm operators, and a full-time secretary and part-time secretary for fire prevention. For that, that breaks down to nine per group, so there's nine on per day. One captain, one lieutenant, and seven firefighters. If a firefighter calls out sick or is injured or is um, on vacation, typically when we run to eight, it's called running to eight for us, uh, when we run to eight, that means that the first person to call out is left vacant. So our shift will be at eight. The captains are always filled, the lieutenants are always filled, one firefighter position will be left vacant. The second firefighter call out sick, might hurt, get hurt or whatever it might be, that position's filled with overtime um, for the duration of that shift. We went to the board in June or maybe it was late May and we requested permission to potentially overspend our budget because what we wanted to do was provide the, the proper staffing, which is nine in my opinion and, and greater and that's something, another topic, but to maintain the level of nine throughout the, the summer season. We continued that until today. Uh, obviously, the town's in, in um, it's very tight right now, so I have just rescinded that, and we're rolling back to eight starting today. Mm -hmm. So this budget moving forward has, in, a, in the plan, uh, is going to run down to a minimum of eight. That's how it's planned out, because the, the proper amount to staff is, it's a significant increase in the overall line item for overtime. Uh, we were able to do it for the duration that I've done it, and I feel very comfortable that we stayed within our constraints, but moving forward, there's there's not an increase in overtime. You, you will see an increase in overtime that I explain for other reasons, but the increase in overtime is not there for that reason. Thank you. 
Thank you to maintain nine throughout the year. Right. Any Thank other questions much. on administration? <laughs> Mr. Latt. How many hours are in the shift? 24. No, I mean, one of the, th breaking it down, the fire, <coughs> as, as that component of nine people on duty, on duty for the 24 hours? Correct. Okay. So, it, and it can happen, um, a firefighter may take 10 hour vacation. So he'll be out for the day portion and be in at night. Um, when that happens, then the day portion will be left vacant, and then they'll come in at night where it's staffed at 9 at night. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Morrow. I do have just questions, and it's more of a generic question. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> and it, it revolves a little bit of what's come up about the schools across the country. And a lot of the schools went on strike, which was sad due to the fact that we're getting $40,000 paid for a job that they deserve much more money. And the more I thought about it, it made me think about when I caught it, and I don't have those figures, that it made me think about the police department and fire department. So my request or question to you is, where do we stand, because we hear about when it's hard to fill roles and et cetera, et cetera. Where do we stand in New Hampshire and this area, like, the fire department on various levels, lieutenants and yourself and the regular firemen, but they're all perfect, God, don't make me want to say regular. That's, that, that's a bad way expressing right? it. Yeah. I, I don't mean it that way. Um, where do we stand with, with our wages versus the towns around us? And I mean to have figures on what the town Portsmouth pays this particular lieutenant averaging and the averaging we're doing that same type of role sure. in Hampton. So I can compare an apple to an apple. What I'm hearing and I see and I, I'm going along with uh, Brian, when you see this big number and there's nothing we can do about it, there is something we can do about it. And what happens will be a lot of the uh, people when they see a $1.4 million increase, they're going to, I'm interpreting a lot of people are going to vote for the default budget. I'd rather have more information about what those wages are composed of so we'd have a better understanding of it. If they're low, I'm in favor of raising those wages, period. If they're average, it makes a better thing. If they're high, it helps us understand something else. But I'm more concerned about, in a sense, low. But we, we don't, I don't have, we, maybe other people don't want this. But I'd like to have something, and I did look a little up on the internet. Mm -hmm. doing, doing such studies, but I know you could do, your department could do a better job. Is that, and I'd like to have that in writing so we can make a good comparison. So I, I know that both locals have looked at that as they have um, worked towards collective bargaining, and they have sought out similar departments. But as you all know, Hampton is very unique in, in its nature. We're a town of 14,970 people, um, nine, 976 people, according to the 2010 census, on an average night in November. But come July at 95 degrees, we no longer have 14,000 people. We're significantly higher. So to compare us to like towns, it's very difficult to do. Well, They've done that. Minute, a lieutenant is a lieutenant. No That's true. Working in the summer or in the winter. That was my question. That's true, but they were also, uh, we're, we're essentially the largest city in the state at that point. And we're understaffed by that at comparison. That point so, might be. So that right. still is the question of what does it range even to? even still, if you compare us to Salem or if you compare us to Portsmouth, Portsmouth or Nashua or Manchester, other people will have it look so to look across a broad spectrum, I know that they've researched that and I'll see if I can't get those numbers for you. Um, I know that the town has also done a study where they've done a wage comparison study for uh, non union employees. So they were using specific towns as well. And that information came about uh, as a result of, you know, their, their hard efforts to make sure that they compared like towns. So is that what you're asking for, David, is a wage comparison? I'm looking for a wage comparison for somebody to just keep it at a supermarket. The manager of the shop sure. save, the manager of Shaw's, the manager of, you know, Hannaford's. All managers of whatever. I'm just looking <clears> for the <throat> generic thing. And I was able to look that up, but it was kind of generic. And then when I looked right. at Hampton, it wasn't there at all. Could be there, but I couldn't find it. So, so geez. I would like to well, a get that comparison. so I have a better understanding of where we really sit. It, it's, it's just to being transparent. Uh, I think we have a great fire department. I Don't concur. misinterpret my mm -hmm. questions, please. Oh, I, and I certainly understand your question, and I also agree with you. We have a great fire department. So, Chief, you, would that be a reasonable thing for you to produce? Uh, okay. it, it'll take some time, but yeah. Okay. I think we could. We can, I can get that right. Okay. Yeah. How, how long might that take? Not long. <laughs> 
and so we can't do it tonight. Not tonight, but not tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Say within two weeks. Oh yeah, that fair. Yeah, and then you can come back to us mm -hmm. whenever you do. Thank you, yeah. sir. Any other questions or comments on administration? Just want to make one more comment uh, based on what Chief Ayotte was right on. But I urge everybody to look at 1998 minutes of the Capital Improvement Program meeting. Back then, we put a line item in, and Chief Sawyer might remember this, for both police and fire, knowing that we would need, Brian Lapham remembers, because he was involved in it. And the reason I bring that up is we had people with planning minds back then. And now we're still sitting here in 2018 talking about the fire department, which is still not fully staffed. We're, we're aware of that. But those thoughts came back years ago, and so I'm anxious to hear in this coming year, Chief, how we can get to there and, and get people together because the staffing shouldn't be, I mean, I watched in the summer, you went through, I mean, it's crazy what you have to do. So I just want to put that out there. So historical things are very important in this town. They don't talk about it much at all the meetings because they don't, maybe they don't want to hear about it, but those of us who were part and parcel of that are going to continue to bring that to the forefront because we did have those discussions. And Mr. Cutting, uh, Captain Cutting can tell you as well and, and uh, others, but thank you. Welcome, everybody. Happy with the administration? Yeah. Uh, I do have a question. Um, <clears throat> new equipment under administration has zero, and that's, that's a fine number. <laughs> I'd move to approve that number. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Blatt. But, you know, I've been reviewing, as Christy knows, I've been reviewing the fixed, fixed asset policy. And in there it says something about each department head will produce a fixed asset data sheet annually. Which we do with Miss uh, Pulliam. She she asked right, so that. Has that, been, has that been done for 2018? Yeah, that's actually you've been you've been updating that, right? Yeah. So our fixed asset over five thousand dollars, if I'm not mistaken, is that accurate? Generally, yeah. Yeah. They have different categories. Right. Yeah. What kind of asset it is. Mm -hmm. So each one of those gets a, a tag. Okay. Basically, so it has its own. Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with the process. Right. Right. I just wanted to be. It was done for 2018. Simple, yeah. yeah. And so yeah, that's so we, we can look at it subsequently. It's, yeah, it's it's right. <laughs> We do it's my updated. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to buy anything else for this? Did I hear her say they were doing like a quarterly? No, I'm just saying that, it's, first of all, 2018 is not over. And right. On a quarterly basis, we run reports in the finance department. But there is no fixed asset report for 2018 that's complete because the year is not complete. Okay. So, um, we do them as we enter the bill. I'm curious when we'll be able to see that. I mean, uh, because we can't see the final operating numbers. Uh, until after our final review, which is unfortunate, but is the fixed asset going to be available? The fixed asset report? Yeah. It can, the unaudited version can be available, sure. Okay. That's Great. part of the audit, too, though. Thank you. So. We generally in the past have <coughs> gotten to a certain point, and then from there, it was just, okay, take the last two weeks and you can figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I know, but we only recently adopted this fixed asset policy as a consequence of going to Gatsby. Yes. And I'm just following up on items related to that Gatsby changeover. So we'll talk more on that subsequently. Thank you for that, Chief. Uh, and so we're all done with administration, right? Okay, great. Fire suppression. Anyone have any comments or thoughts? Mr. LeBrant. Yes, under um, replacement equipment, um, I believe that... Um, that's where the Zodiac's outboard motor is going to come from. And has been replaced this year as a matter of fact. Uh, that was going to be the next thing is that that was, it's already been purchased out of 2018 money. That's correct. Okay. We just did so that in the last week. That's going to be adjusted. Christy will make an adjustment to that. What else is coming out of there? Because I know the, the Zodiac was about $7,132, I think. Correct. Yeah. So what else is so that line item has in, it has increased as a result of some several items that were uh, changes. Uh, as you might imagine, we have to do flow testing, we have to do air monitoring and air testing, and then replacement of SCBA equipment, uh, the face pieces. Mm -hmm. um, they they went up in price, and if they're scratched or if they're cracked, then they have to be replaced, and that re reflects that cost increase. Um, additionally, there's also a reflection of a device that we use to um, test for fit for SCBA masks. So that was put in there because previously that, that hadn't been accounted for for, um, for calibration. So. Okay. And, and one other thing, um, yes, the, I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm correct with the name of this. Was it a Zoll chest compression board? 
Was that the name of the company? Zoll. Zoll. Yep. Okay. Um, it's I, called Autopulse. There were three of them that we purchased. Mm -hmm. That came off of the what? Fund 27, oh, okay. which is our EMS account. Okay. Yep. That's different. Okay. Yes, it is. That is because I thought perhaps that's where the Zoll just. And that you know that's that's quite a. Uh, a wonderful piece of equipment. Do you have them yet? We do. We actually just completed training today. They'll be uh, rolled out in the next two to three days. We're going to see that probably by Monday morning. It'll be on each um, ambulance. Wow. And um, the, the training went very well. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Larry Wobber. Just had a comment on the Zodiac, I mean, Marine 2, uh, 20 years ago. Yeah, that 20 years ago. 21, summer yeah. of 1998 when Skip Sullivan and Bill Wren and I took the first ride there. It's amazing. It's been uh, 20 years, and, and of course, we yeah. went on from there. I have a particular question. I want to commend the fire department for addressing, and all the members of the fire department for addressing a very important issue. And I, I want to make sure I'm on the same page: protective clothing, and specifically talking about turnout gear. Mm -hmm. I know you've had meetings with various selectmen, various people in town, and really commend you on that. Is it my understanding that currently you plan before the end of this year to purchase? my number, I'm just guessing, four sets of, if there's money left over in this year's budget, and this is what this is for, for next year to buy more? No. It is. Um, so in 2015, when I presented the budget, um, what we were talking about then was a program replacement. Right. So what we did was, the first year we did six sets, then four sets subsequent <coughs> years until we got to 2019. In 2019, the remaining sets that are firefighter gears, uh, so like the, the, the people who are on the front line, their, their gear, there's five left remaining, um, they need to be replaced. This year, we've already made a purchase of four sets. Right. There's a little bit money le uh, of money left in that line item, and Deputy's actually already put in for two sets right now, but I'm holding on to that um, till we see where we stand uh, financially this, in the next 30 days, and I've talked to Mr. Walsh about that. But those two sets will be part of the next series of five, but the program replacement was to get all primary sets of gear replaced so that everybody would have a current set of primary gear, their gear that they're wearing every day. When they are exposed to chemicals or to smoke, they need to wash their gear, they need a second set. Uh, Mr. Welch and I have been working with, a, a moving forward with the capital improvement plan to purchase a second set for the firefighters so that they would have that available equipment, which is exceptionally necessary, especially what we're, what we're finding out with all the carcinogens that we're being exposed to and, and increasing cancer risk. So that second set, is a group purchase as opposed to a program replacement, which we've done up until this point. So there's not enough money in that line item anyway to buy five sets. Okay, so let me ask you this. Is, is it safe to say there is a revolving fund idea for a Warren article starting this year? That was Mr. Walters' proposal. Right, which is not a, not a bad idea, but this is what I wanna, and I said this to you in, in February, mm -hmm. when it kind of high school. Mm -hmm. You came back and you had 220000 left in your budget. And my question, well, it was pretty darn close to last year. Okay, so whatever it was. Why wouldn't we have then? Because turnout gear, when I talk to the fire department guys, that's one of the biggest issues they have. Why wouldn't we have, and you see where my mind's going, we talk about budgets and we talk about budget increases, which is separate from wages. This is a critical component of the fire department. Why wouldn't we have purchased some of those out of the 2017 budget before we did last year's, because every year we come to this, and, I, and it's just a question I raise. I understand. And you um, and I talked about that. In, in right, and, of, and as I told you that day, that our goal is to make sure that we have all a primary set of gear. Not everybody did at that point. And additionally, we're part of a bigger piece of the, we're a small pie portion in a bigger pie. So the town has a goal too, and we're part of that. So at the end of the year, when the brakes are pumped for everybody, we have to slow down on spending. There's other people that have come in line, and sometimes that's the fire department. We've come in line, and they say, hey, you, you need to buy this, you need to buy that. So at the end of that year, there were wage line on it, items left, right. and to purchase equipment like that, that, that's not what happened. But to David's point earlier, when we talk about comparison with communities, mm -hmm. and having come from a, a background with people currently in high positions in fire department, police and schools and everything else, the fire department in bigger cities having two sets of turnout gear is critical. And we saw that major fire down the beach in April. And though your guys were coming out in there like, I mean, can you imagine what, what is on there? Bill, no, I mean, what's on there, uh, the uniform, whatever you want to call it. So if people are requesting that, we seem to find, and this is what's gonna be my whole mandate during this whole budget, 
We seem to find places where we find money to, to grab this or grab that or all of a sudden increase somebody's salary at another way, but we don't seem to find with monies left a critical component. And so I say to you, Chief Ayotte, you got to keep fighting for that, and, and we're going to have the revolving fund. But if you feel we need it, the old expression Skip Solomon used to say, you know, maybe I don't need it, but I'm gonna, maybe I can't have it, but I'm going to tell you that I need it now. And that's what I want to hear you tell us and tell the selectmen so that we don't get into this thing where, oh, we're going to be here another year, and we bought two sets versus nine sets. That's all I'm saying. So that's, that's, where, I'm, that's where my mind's at. Well, why don't we ask the chief now? Do you need it now? Certainly, and that's why I put it into the capital improvement plan for 2019. No, I mean, the two sets for everybody? now yeah right now we are we're with the with the purchases that we made this year there are five remaining sets of gear that need to go as primary and then essentially all of our fire firefighters need secondary set of gear and so that's more than what you're asking for in this budget correct? or more than what's in this budget now right that's correct because they did it as a capital improvement separate line it's part of my capital improvement plan it's the only thing that i asked capital for capital improvement plan is not getting any money that's that. correct that's what i'm saying that's so that's not issue. a budget how that's much a nice more, how much more money do you need in the budget to do uh, two sets I believe that the capital improvement will and you're going to get me on the number because i didn't look at it today but i think it's 134,000. 134,000. Yeah. okay so uh, is that right mr Pluff? are you, had you had well you I, I haven't got it here but it says five at 31.54 they're going up so yeah, we right. also know the three percent price no, increase. No. So, if so you can think of running around one hundred and forty. And remember, capital, uh, pro, a capital improvement program. That's a that's a placeholder, unless unless we as a community we used to put one major project a year, we selectman would be a proponent to a warrant article. You could put twenty things on capital improvement, but if we don't have it placed in a certain year, it could sit there like some things have for ten years. No, but to your point, Mr. Warburton, mm -hmm. as uh, as a placeholder mm -hmm. and asking to prioritize, that's my priority. Well, whether I mean, if you look at the fixed asset policy, the uniforms apparently do not fall into capital, uh, so it's probably not the right place to. It's a it's it a group purchase over thirty thousand dollars. So uh, as a block, it would come in as hundred thirty. I understand that, but according to fixed asset, it is based on individual units, not group purchases. Okay. So it, it, it's I understand your point. Um, well, that's what the that's what the policy is. Okay. Um, so whether I, I don't think it probably belongs in, in, under capital. It's not a fixed asset according to the policy. Uh, fixed asset is what capital is, right? So uh, if, if you need additional money, I need you to sit there and say I need additional money because I need this now. That's what this committee was waiting to hear, or not hear. Certainly, and, and we have the prices for the new prices, 34000 right? It's 126000 just for the... For 10, for 40 of those, correct? Yes. That's not how much it It's a little bit more than that. Yeah, that price has gone up. It's gone up. Yeah, that, we know that price has gone up. Are you uncomfortable with the numbers that and, and no, maybe you uh, come back with us with the right number at a subsequent time? Would that be better? I can. Yeah, well, I, I want to know. I can what tell you that $140,000 will cover 40 cents a year. Yes. And what I, what I would recommend, because to respect Mr. Welch, too, and I don't expect an answer tonight to put the chief on the spot. However, I would recommend or request that as we're looking to the end of the summer, if you feel, that you're, and you may not, but if you have money left in that budget, I think it behooves anyone, I think we should buy some this year as well. Because, and, and I'm only saying this, I hope you come back to us when we're talking in the ensuing months that that could be a possibility. If it isn't, it isn't. But that's where we got to be at because that is a critical component of that position outside of wages of doing the job and having the proper equipment much like the police department chief so comes in and all the things they need. But right. we, we I want to observe that in previous years, uh, we've added to things, uh, I believe it's the police oh, budget, yeah. for yeah. example, yeah. and then subsequently Mr. Welsh found money in the uh, remaining existing budget, and so we then lowered it back to its original We may number. do that this year. Yep. So right. we could do that right now if we wish. I would I would have no problem if they came back with more information mm -hmm. uh, because we're still going to file a review. I don't want them to feel like, you know, we've already asked Deputy Kennedy on some information on uh, mm -hmm. things earlier. So maybe they could add that. And if it takes two or three weeks, we're not going anywhere. The final review of the budget is January or so. So it's like we can, that's fine. But I appreciate the discussion and, and the attention to this because I think it's extremely important. And the only other thing I'll say is your work as comp costs have, has been pretty darn good but there's another reason for that the buildings in Hampton are built so much better now in other communities you don't have the amount of structural my terminology 
and you have so many well, the best trained firefighters in the state. So that's a good thing we can say to the community that this, your budget is pretty well prepared for what you need and look into the future. And all these other things that are happening aside from that, we just want to keep the ball rolling. Thank you. So um, just want to finish up on this point and I'll give you the phone minute. As I understand it, the budget is projected to have a very small surplus uh, this year, right, Christy? About 60000 I heard the number to be. Okay, good. Thank uh, you. So that's going to be enough to, to fund uh, uh, the uh, additional protective clothing. Uh, if that number is correct, I don't know if it is or not. Is it, Chrissy? That was at the end of September, uh. correct? Uh, no, no, no. I'm saying so projected at the end of September, you still had... Well, I'd have to go back. Wait a minute. Here would it was. It was like fifty-nine thousand. I haven't done any year in projections. That's okay. okay. So sixty. Right. So he's probably going to be. Well, that's okay. <coughs> I mean, so that's may I suggest, Brian? Yep. That um, we suggest to the town manager and board of selectmen that if if there is sufficient surplus money, that this committee is um, inclined to suggest that they make it a a high priority consideration to fund protective yeah. closing out of this year's Absolutely. budget. Absolutely. Is I, that what I'm hearing you want uh, to make a motion I on? Like that. Well, I don't, I'm not going to make a motion now. I'm saying I'm putting the information out there. That's what the proper way of okay. you know. So we will Mr. come to that. We'll come to that. All right. So the question I have is, does anyone have a second set at this point? That are within time frame? No. None of the firemen have a second set of not in date. <coughs> Not in date. Nope. The recommended no. NFPA are uh, changing for his tenure. I find that very distressing, extremely distressing, considering the passagens and the situation. You have you have the machines at the We have an extractor at each. Yeah, you have the machines to clean them. Right. But nobody has a second set. So if you go out in two calls in one day and they're both fires, they're putting, they're putting on, on Yeah. I don't like the set of that. Yeah. Mr. How long does it take to clean them? Uh, about 45 minutes for a wash cycle and about six hours to dry. Wow. So you couldn't go with, if you had to go out again a second time, yeah. that's, that's, right. that's right. unacceptable. It's not a good thing, but another, just one other point. Um, <coughs> it, I, I so agree that it, you know, everybody should have a second set, but, but I also place. want to mention huh? that in, at some fire departments, and some of them are our neighbors, okay, <laughs> some of the firemen are wearing the clothes from hand-me-downs from, uh, <laughs> they don't even have one set of mine. Well, in, in, and I discussed this a minute ago about primary sets. Right. We have firefighters who did not get a, a primary set of turnout gear. They're wearing somebody else's. That's, that's the way it is, mm -hmm. and I've been trying to change that exactly. through program replacement. We've spent approximately $20,000, $25,000 a year on gear, mm -hmm. and we're trying to do that so that new, new hires get new gear, and people who were purchased in 2009, there was, a, there was an AFG grant that was received where they did a block purchase of 33 sets. Those come, to, come of age in 2019. They're 10 years old. Some of those firefighters still have a year left on that gear. That's why I did the program replacement with the breakdown that I did, which was six, four, four, and five. So when we get there, everybody who was purchased in 2009 will have a new set as a primary set. All the new firefighters coming in should by then have a brand new set, primary gear. Right. But they need everybody. Everybody needs, needs a backup. second set. Oh, yep. That's important. Okay. Any other questions on fire suppression, Mister? Okay. Pardon my ignorance, but. Overtime wages? Yes, sir. Okay. And Which section are you in, sir? Suppression. Okay. Fire suppression, of course. Oh, fire suppression. Uh, in 80, uh, let's see, in 2017, your actual number was 87,571. You but uh, for 2018, you budgeted 174,000. Your actual year to date, as of September 30th, 2018. Is 65,298, which gives you an average of about 72,55 a month, and you're requ you're requesting 195, which is a 12 percent increase. It is. Do you intend to use? We'll uh, be using most of that. This is hunting season. Most of our firefighters are hunters, <laughs> so between the months of November, and December, we see a lot more people out. Okay. The addition, the 12 percent. It, it, Mr. Jones, you might remember this. We discussed training, and at the time when I had put in the fire training, the live fire training, we had the wages included in that training line item. Those wage line items have been moved to the appropriate line item now for wages, 
for okay. the training for our rescue swimmer and for life fire. That's so what that increases. The result. increase is entirely a result of moving money out of training and into this line item. Correct, and then you'll see there's an okay. increase in training because of two other items that we needed to add. Okay. And that's why we saw the increase from the 2017 overtime wages actual 87,000 yeah. and the requested <coughs> for 174 in 2018. So that's, yeah. that was the jump for this year? Yeah. That was the, the, yeah, that was the increase from 174 to 195, yeah. right? But you also, you know, I'm projecting out in May for 18 months from now, and I'm hoping against hope, and please, I hope that they all stay safe. But if there's an injury, I have to be able to cover that. And a firefighter getting injured, shoulders, knees, whatever it might be, backs, um, that's a long duration out. And I have to be prepared for that throughout the entire year. But, so you, that's, said, that's but, but you said hunting, and I can appreciate that. But <laughs> my, the question I still have is 87,000 was the actual in, in 2017. Why did it jump up to that big increase this current year, not the proposal? Why did we go up 90,000 for this year's budget in the overtime? No, well, it, it was, it is, what you, right. You're looking at the actual, not right. the budget, the actual, from, right. from 27. Oh, I know. The, I'm sorry, the budget. The actual, way I was, but excuse me. I'm sorry. Okay. And last year was the default, so. But why did we go up to 174 as far as requests? That was, that was the, Over that was from 2017. That's what, okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. That's, now again. Thank you. Your actual year to date okay. is 60, the end of September. 65. 65. Yeah. So you anticipate in spending 100 and roughly. I anticipate spending more. Yeah. Now. I anticipate spending, spending more. more. So, yeah, I can't more. tell you how much more. I don't have injury right now. The, all my firefighters are working in healthy, thank God. But if that happens between now and December, then that's where that money will come from. Good. So thank there's you. a potential, obviously, okay, you know, yeah. as. So there. Mr. LeBranch. Um, Chief, you want to under okay. um, equipment, other. Yes, sir. You have a number of small items. I do. That, you know, add up to $18,000. A question for you on the. Um, do you have a piece of equipment on each fire truck that um, that you'd have on a boat, for instance, uh, a canister that you pull a, a rope and it, it folds out into a inflatable raft? We do not. However, we did purchase a small Zodiac craft this year. I believe it was uh, seventeen hundred dollars, a little under thirteen hundred dollars, um, and that was because of what we experienced last year. The deputy uh, lobbied for it to get a small boat, small craft, and this is a five-person craft. That will allow us, if somebody is stranded in a home, we're able to go get them, retrieve them, bring them back to a large um, truck, which the, and the chief has been working on to get us a, a high driving truck so that we're not driving our fire engines through deep water now. Um, so we have that in, at the beach station. We don't have something that's a, a portable raft like you're talking about now. Uh, would it be, I, I just, I was thinking about last year and the flooding down at the beach and. We've actually purchased a small Zodiac craft for that. Okay. But that means that it's something that you can put on t on top of the fire truck, or it, it'll actually well in that area we're we're anticipating that, and the chief soil might be able to speak to that. We have a uh, uh, surplus military vehicle that we'll hopefully be using if we do have high water, we'll which I think you've heard about, about that already. We're yeah. going to talk about that later. But I just I, I just, just thought to myself, um, if you had a boat, <laughs> you would have one of those inflatable rafts for an emergency, and I don't know what they cost. <laughs> And I don't, you know, it's in a canister. You pull a rope and it inflates, and so it wouldn't. No, it's. I don't. I think it would be reasonable to have, have one of those on every fire truck because you could have a flash flood, uptown as well as downtown. You could have a, a any, you know, anywhere. Yep. And what we've experienced is more standing water, uh, or flooding that is associated with tide. Um, so as far as flash flooding like that, the standing water or the tides coming across roadways certainly have a major impact on us. Um, not where we'll be swamped in it necessarily. When we drive through, make a decision to go rescue somebody who might be stranded in their home, that's one thing. But now we're making provisions to get around that. Okay. I just wanted to ask. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Lappin. Um, as far as the Zodiac goes, mm -hmm. do you use these for like just life saving events at the beach? They're primarily rescue boats, yes. Okay. So, and, they, and they've been used. Uh, you've seen the news. Uh, this summer we had uh, two people perish in Seabrook, and we were part right. of that rescue. I know back three years ago we lost a woman out there, and I was out there until 4 o'clock in the morning when we were all standing five feet apart 
and trying to sure. see if someone came up. Okay. Any uh, other? Unfortunately, uh, that didn't happen. But if we had had a bolt like that, so so we do. We have two primary vessels. One is Marine One, which is especially for open water. Uh -huh. uh, Marine Two is for closer into the rocks and also in in Hampton Harbor and the river. So it's okay. designed for that. Anything else under fire <laughs> suppression? Anybody? No. No. Okay, I got a couple of questions. First one is to Christy. We've got a couple of items in here um, under replacement equipment that appear to be under the umbrella of the fixed asset policy, uh, specifically uh, the marine engines are each five thousand dollars, and you got a hose for five thousand uh, dollars. <coughs> that qualifies for the fixed asset policy, right? And uh, thus, shouldn't it be under the capital outlay? I'll let you answer that at a subsequent meeting, but I have that question throughout the budget. Uh, we need to start yeah. you know, isolating these capital purchases, and that's what the capital outlay yes. is all about, as far as I can tell. Yeah. And uh, I'll let you think about it, and we'll talk more on that, okay? Um, Chief. Sir. Uh, this is a yes or no question. I like those. Excellent. Uh, we have... Uh, Fireworks detail wages, uh, which solely supports the Hampton Beach Village District's fireworks display. Correct? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions on the fire suppression? I would just mention about the fireworks. When we shoot those fireworks, we filled the town parking lots with paying customers, which ultimately pay for that support, and we are part of the community. Hmm. And you're right. We also fill the Hampton Beach Village District parking lots. Right. Right. And yet, they don't bear any of the expense associated with filling it. Okay. Anyway, we will move on. No, but we bear a lot of expense, <laughs> yeah. I can assure you yeah. that. <laughs> okay, fire prevention. Anybody with questions or? No? Thank you. Oh, <coughs> okay. okay. Uh, communications, something we all enjoy here. You'd skip training, sir. Did I? Yes. I'll get back to it then. <laughs> communications. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. Um, Chief, explain about the telephone. And, and I'm, I'm looking at, let me just get to it here. <laughs> telephone. Okay, so. We've seen a, a market increase in that. So provides telephone service for both stations, which I understand the fire department communications receiver system, 21 lines under the Centric system, and three Verizon emergency lines. So the cell, you have cellular phone service, Verizon, 5,000, a little over five, then monthly charge phone service, 18624. Uh, I can tell you with several, if not all, phone companies having dealt with a lot of these issues daily, there are unbelievable deals. Are we getting the best deal for our phone bills, so to speak? Because I got to tell you, they're incredible things now. We're actually part of the the whole town, if I'm not mistaken, right, Christy? We're we're all under the Verizon plan. For cell phones. For cell phones. So that when when our cell phones are up for replacement, we actually go through finance when it comes to that. The Centrex system, the uh, the other telephones, we have several handsets throughout the building: the EOC, um, fire alarm. Um, down at the beach. Also, they're in the apparatus bay, they're in the lieutenant's office, they're in the day room. So there's a significant amount of voice over IP phones that have been yeah. serviced to that. So this monthly phone service, the 18,000 uh, part of it, that's strictly with cell phones? No, strictly? the 5,200 is cell phones. 5,200 cell phones. Yeah. And so do we, are the cell phones that we provide, the employees have those from the town? Command staff? Have? Right. I have one, Command the deputy staff. has one. Right, the EMS officer has one fire prevention. He also comes he, because he comes in to do fire investigations. There's one in each ambulance, and there's also one in the engines. I'm sorry. The MiFi's. And the MiFi's, which are hotspots, essentially correct, yeah. for each ambulance, and also at the beach engine because they are transmitting their EKGs to the hospital. So in order to do that, they need a, a Verizon connection or a telephone connection to be able to do that. So they'll send their EKG, and it'll arrive at the hospital prior to their arrival, so the doctor can read it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Anything else on communications? Thank you. Uh, 
Mr. LeBranch, your favorite topic, training. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments on training? No? Thank you. Repair services. Questions? Mr. LeBranch. <coughs> Chief, um, how much did it cost to fix engine four? I don't know the total on that. Primex was involved, so that, that went through the insurance company. We had a deductible. I believe oh, okay. that would cost us $1,000 for the deductible. Oh, okay. Um, so that, that, that was covered under insurance. Yeah, that was a natural disaster. So Thank you very much. Yes, that's, a, that's a... That's a uh, <laughs> now, the, the, I guess the other thing is that this all goes together with the fire department, the police department getting those big vehicles. Um, we borrowed a couple of them we after... Did after driving engine four into water to, to rescue some people that had driven their car and then were floating away. You in call car. And, um, but, of course, in the future, perhaps, um, I was wondering about using that Zodiac that you talked about. You know, if somebody's in a car that they drove into three feet of water and they can't get out, rather than, well, if you had the big truck. That's certainly our intention. Yeah. to do that. Okay. Um, people call for fire calls if there's a fire alarm activation or if there's an actual fire, we still have to get through that water. So there may be a time that we are going to go down there to extinguish fire or to investigate a fire call. If it's a rescue call, we are looking at alternate modes of, of getting down to yeah. that. I, one thing that I, um, I want to note is that people took pictures uh, of the flooding on some of those streets that go out into the marsh. Mm -hmm. and. There was one picture that bothered me quite a bit, and that was that, of course, each house was an island, and there was three <coughs> feet of water in the street, and they had a, a drone, I think, that flew over the, the street, and you could see the fire hydrant, and it was one foot. There was a foot of water above the fire hydrant. That would certainly, um, if, if one of those houses was on fire, you would go to put it out, of course. You need a fire boat. <laughs> You better start thinking about that, you know? Right. And I'm not kidding. I'm serious. I mean, there was, we had at least three, at least during high tide. Certainly. I, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what type of a fire boat, because you almost need something, a pump on a boat. Oh, uh, you stick a pump with a puddle. On a boat, I, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just throwing, throwing it out there. Thanks. Just throwing it out okay, there. Okay, any other uh, questions or comments on repair services? Oh, thank you. Oh, Mr. DeLuca, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I see that your actual in 2017 was 70924 You budgeted for 2018 125650 Actual year-to-date, as of September, you've exceeded that by 2%, 128173 and the year's not out. Do you anticipate going more? No, this year we had, we purchased, well, um, just asking yeah, we purchased, no. To me, it was an under budget. Uh, right, and, and this year we purchased an older engine, and we needed to get service done to that. We also yeah. purchased, uh, well, we had to do some serious repairs to the ladder truck um, and engine one, so that certainly caused that to rise. So we have the question, this? Frank, was that, uh, do you plan on additional repairs this calendar year? Right, and right. I believe the answer was no, is right. that correct? Okay. We're, we're not anticipating any. And, and, you're not, and you're looking at relatively a flat budget for next year? We are. Okay. Okay. Well set on repair services. Thank you. Um, fire stations and buildings. Any questions, comments? The only question I had, and, Mr. I, think, Warburg. and I think, I'm sorry to raise my hand, sir. Thing. Um, I, I know you explained it to selectors, but I, I think the public would like to hear it. Talk about the uh, line item on peer maintenance. Sure. So that's gone up. Can you can you go over that a little bit again? So it remains the same, okay. but uh, one of our intentions right now, and, it, and it's definitely weather driven, is to fix the shed right. that, that houses the equipment down there. Um, there is trim work that needs to be done. It needs to be scraped. And it needs to be painted. Uh, in order to do that, and to try to get quotes from from uh, people who are able to do that over the over the water and be able to work on that in that environment, it's not an easy process. We've tried several companies, and they say, well, first of all, we're too busy. Okay, well, we'll try the next company. We, we won't work over water. So there's some people that we're trying to get that done, and we're going to accomplish that this year. I won't be able to do it before the end of the year because uh, the weather's changed on us. It's getting too cold. Are you still, as a fire department, storing the state lifeguard um, vehicles down there? 
we don't store anything for the state lifeguards. There is a spot on the pier that they can put a dock, and they have their their right. um, second sea do. But I know we used to store them. Yep. We have. But what I'm saying is, at the end of the year, I thought they had gone away from that. There was so there was a change. You're right. Uh, there was a change where they're using a large um, tired trailer right. to bring that out from the the uh, seashell complex. Correct. And they're bringing their new sea do down to that. The old one does get stationed. It's approximately the end of June to the end of August. Does get stationed at, at the town at our pier. Yeah, and it's, uh, I don't believe that it was there in the beginning of the season. They had it, had it down for maintenance, so it wasn't on there directly, but they bring it down it's off to so the So we right still side. have that good relationship back and forth as far as... Absolutely. That's good. Thank yep. you. That's all I have. Anything else on their fire stations and buildings? Questions, comments? No? Thank you very much. I believe that concludes the uh, discussion on the fire department. Chief, I believe we have uh, two requests for information from you subsequently. Uh, one was the wage comparison study by Mr. Mora, and the other one was what's the actual number you will need today to get sufficient protective clothing sure enough, yeah. for your department. Understood, sir. Thank uh, you. When, when do you think we could have those items? I can send them to you an email. Uh, the second set, I can have that prepared and sent to you by noon tomorrow. Okay, that's good. Like. Um, the wage comparison, deputies actually got the information. It'll take him at least two days, right? Next week. And also, to your great point. So before Thanksgiving, on both points. Yes, yes sir. Okay, that's great. To your great point, in addition, on the turnout gear, the addendum to that is if we can possibly take those expenditures out of money left in this 2018 budget to do that. Well, how it's funded is not their concern. No, their no, concern is to tell us, yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're part of the process of saying right. maybe we put it in the budget or otherwise make no, I understand that, yeah. but it's yeah. So I appreciate you getting back that information. I appreciate your presentation. Thank, thank you, you for your help and us putting together a budget. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chief. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very yeah. much. Have a nice evening. Okay. We now have next uh, the most anxious, because he always looks forward to coming to the budget committee, uh, the Chief of Police. It's not true, Jeff. No, it's not? <laughs> <laughs> well, get out of here. <laughs> don't, don't say that too loud here. <laughs> so I, we're going to have, uh, I'm sure the police chief would love Christy to do a summary overview of his budget before we, we commence into questioning. And so, uh, Christy, do your thing. Okay. The police department's total budget is $4,370,918 which is $97,555, or 2.28% higher than the 2018 default budget. Wages make up $3,693,312, or 84.5%. Gasoline and diesel makes up $67,148, or 1.54%. Utilities make up $118,140, or 2.7%. And other items not categorized make up 492,318 or 11.26%. There's a, just a breakdown of that there on that next slide. The breakdown of the 2.28% increase wages account for $66,826 or 1.56%. Items not categorized account for $29,740 or 0.7%. Gasoline and diesel accounts for $10,159 or 0.24% and utilities um, actually went down by $9,170 or negative 0.21%. And that just gives you the breakdown of the pie chart there. Thank you, Christy. Yeah. So we're gonna go to this one by section as well. And always top of the list is administration, I guess because it begins today. So, <coughs> Any questions on, Mist, on Mr. Uh, administration, Mr. Lapple? Um, oh, you have a question on Christie's summary. On her summary. Okay, great. I'm just not, I'm going to keep going yeah. back to this because yeah. I don't understand it. Every time. Yeah. What's <laughs> items not categorized? That's items that don't belong in wages, gas, and diesel or utilities. Fall into another category. They just fall outside of those three categories. Somewhere. Yeah. 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 And we'll, we'll discover them as we go through section by section. Yeah. Any other questions on the uh, summary, Mr. LeBranch? No, not the summary. Okay. Any other questions on the summary? Thank you. Questions on administration, Mr. LeBranch? Um, the, the question that we asked the fire chief, and I'm going to ask you, the, we're just going to do the same thing. 
Um, how many people in the police department are not union? You have myself, the deputy, two lieutenants, a, uh, my administrative assistant. We do have a number of part-time employees. Um, I don't know if that's where you want to go. <coughs> no, 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 not the part-time. Not part-time. We have some part-time folks that do work with us year-round, mm -hmm. uh, but primarily for the full-time employees, it's myself, the deputy, two lieutenants, and my assistant. Okay. And so, um, and knowing that you're not part of the union, um, did you did you get raises this year? You and Our, the deputy and these other the administration, the, these other people. That yeah, we, we had those across the board raises back in July. Well, uh, I'm not sure what month it was, but, but no. it was during the summer mm -hmm. sometimes. Sometime. Uh, before so the before I think it was April. Okay, so the so that I guess what I'm going with here is that. Um, so the wages that we are seeing, that's it. They're not going to be. No, you got to understand when it. They're when not going to be added to. Well, no. Um, when you look at administration, and we we just had this discussion. One of the one of the misnomers, and, and I've spoken with the chairman in the past about sometimes the way the line item reads in the budget. We're really trying to close a gap as to what it says in the line item and to what it actually means. So you'll look at this one. For administration, you get the police chief, the deputy police chief, administrative assistant, but you also have the prosecutor. Now, the prosecutor is a sergeant that's in the Hampton Police Association. Mm -hmm. So that kind of throws that off. What I think where you're, where you're trying to drive to, mm -hmm. that throws that off a little bit. It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much, Chief. Mr. Morrow. I'd like to ask you the same question I asked the fire chief <coughs> in reference to various levels within your department, chief, lieutenants, sergeants, and all that, and compare them to other towns and communities that are local, such as Portsmouth, Exeter, or Seabrook, as examples only. Okay. Just so I could get a better understanding of where we are, and I would like to see that. So I can direct you to where you can find that. Okay, the town did engage in a uh, wage study for can the north. Can you get it for me? Huh? Can you get it for me? Um, it, it's public information, so I think it would be better if you did that research. It's a wage study that's uh, available through the town office. I don't have it. It's, it's something that it was something that so was. So I go to the town office. And pick uh, it. Or you can go on the website. Oh, I did go on the website. It's there. I was able to get Portsmouth, but I couldn't find anything on Hampton at all. I did it with a generic lookup. Yep. Yeah, MRI did the study. Okay, let's track. Christy, could you email us the link to that study? Yeah, it's right on the town's website. Thank you. Just there, email us the link. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The other location for the union comparison positions, I don't have a wage study, but the New Hampshire Municipal Association does one every few years. The town is a subscriber, so you could request that through the town. Because I don't have, you have to have a password as a member to get mm -hmm. into that website to get that. I don't have that password, only the town office has it. Well, I don't have it either. Well, then what I would we ask you to do is contact the manager's office. They right. have that. They can provide that to you. Christine? The NHMA, what's the wage study? The, yeah, the NHMA. That yeah. is the, the best accurate information I can give you. We don't keep a running. Uh, the Chief, Chief's Association has one, but that's a, a, a wage study that's for the, the association. It's not something that I have permission to hand out. So I could check on it if I could give you that one, but I don't know. I don't, right now, I don't have permission to give that to you. That would be interesting to see that one, Chief. The Chiefs Association? Yeah. I'll inquire as to whether actually we're hosting the New Hampshire Chiefs Association meeting on Tuesday, so I will inquire as to whether that document can be disseminated to people outside our association. Because the Chiefs Association, we pay a fee for them, right? Um, a, mem uh, a membership is paid in my name, yes, by the town. Right. So it is taxpayer money that... that Pays my membership, yes. Right. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if we can get that information. Very interested to see if we can get that information. I'll ask. So I look forward to hearing yep. that. Christy, can you get us the uh, the NHMA uh, document that the chief is referring to? I will do my best. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, uh, I have a question. Mr. DeLuca? Just to piggyback on you, when uh, you know the average officer salary, that just when you look at that, is that just New Hampshire and surrounding communities, or do we go? A, can we go a little bit outside that, like Massachusetts? I don't really um, border community. I don't think that is. You can't. It, when you do that, you're comparing apples to oranges. Right. And, and the first thing I want to be clear to say: you can't pay a police officer in this town enough money. But that said, no, no, and I agree with that. You. Said, I agree. We have to live in the within the limitations that the taxpayers can bear. 
We're current, just so we all know, we are currently in, in negotiations with the Hampton Police Association, so I don't want to go too deep into that because okay. those are ongoing negotiations. What I would say, my personal belief as Chief of Hampton and being in my law enforcement career has been 30 years in New Hampshire, that you've got to compare apples to apples. If you took the Hampton Police Department and moved it just over the border, same size community, same type of operation, you'd probably see a 30 to 40 percent increase in wages, just yeah, because totally. that's, that's the difference okay. between Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And so I don't use Massachusetts comparisons. Well, they also have taxes, income taxes. Sales I'm taxes, not here to talk about Massachusetts <laughs> taxes. I'm here yeah, to talk yeah, about wages. Right. So, I understand, yeah. but they, they, they need higher wages. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's uh, stay on the... Uh, but they don't pay property taxes like we do either. Let's stay on our, local, let's services. Stay on our local budget matters, okay? okay. Uh, administration, Mr. Warburton, I yes. sense that you have a question. I do have a question. And Chief Sawyer, you just made me feel old again when you said you've been a... <laughs> Police officer for 30 years because we. Well, Brian, you are old. <laughs> I yeah, know. Yeah. Say <laughs> he does well. right, we, we go way back. And Deputy Hobbs, good to see you too. Chief, you, I think you might have the answer. To, I, mean, I know you have the answer to on the overtime wages. Was that just moved from another account? It looks like a. Yeah, what, uh, what we've been trying to do, and uh, I can't compliment Christy enough for her assistance in this. And yeah. Tim, we've had a lot of conversations about really trying to make this process, particularly in our budget, more understandable and, and consolidate things when we can. Mm -hmm. I just found that there was, over the years, I think, as you're trying to build things and, and explain things, sometimes we may go too far and there's a time to bring things back to a consolidation. So what that reflects is over time uh, in the area of computers. Yeah. A lot of times we have to have somebody come in and deal with a, uh, when the, the computer system fails. It's one of those things, you know, I, I remember operating a cruiser with a, with the technology of a clipboard, but today you can't do that. You have to have the technology up and running, so people have to come in and maintain that or come in on uh, odd hours. And the problem is, is the team of people we have doing that cross different sections of the budget. You have administrative uh, people that are truly administrative people. You have people that are in unions and it crosses too many sections, so I wanted to put that in one area. Okay. So that's what that overtime reflects. Thank you. Any other? Mr. Lapp. Uh, yeah, speaking of computers and what have you, have we thought about hiring someone from outside just to take care of computers? I would suspect uh, we are in a time in, in, in our history where we're, we're going to experience a lot of turnover due to retirements. And I expect that's going to impact our technology section. Right. So when we get to that point, we're certainly going to explore if that is a more beneficial uh, way to go to the taxpayer and look at an outside uh, entity to come in and maintain yeah, that. We'd always have to have, Brian, understand you're going to understand, we're going to always have to have people inside that at least have some working knowledge how to reset things when we have those breakdowns yeah. on Christmas Eve, because that's when it's going to happen. But overall, the maintenance and running of the system, we are going to explore um, an outside vendor to Good. handle that. It's, it's an exploration. I'm not committing. I want to be clear. I'm not committing. I'm going to explore. <laughs> but keep in uh, mind, Brian, yeah, that when it comes to the police computers, there are privacy factors right. that have you know from a security oh, yeah. point sure. of view. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. unique. It's a unique consideration to the department. I would suggest. Yeah. I just I'm want to looking that. through all of the I understand. departments, yeah. and I see the same things, mm -hmm. and so therefore, I believe you're going to see that a direction the town is going to explore extensively. Okay. And the police department included. We're just, as the chairman pointed out, we're, we're, we have to be called CGIS compliant because we have our access to federal and state databases. So, but we are going to explore it, Mr. Laura. Okay. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but about four months ago, approximately, a police department in somewhere in the United States, because I don't remember where it was at the time, with all the cyber stuff going on, they shut down the police department's computers. Mm -hmm the bad guys, mm -hmm. whoever they are, on the other side of the world. And they charged them a ransom of, uh, of $10,000. So, so they had to pay the $10,000. My concern is, from what Brian just brought up, we get these people, we also need somebody that's somewhat conversant and be able to protect us in the, in the side of the world with all this stuff going on. Fully aware of that. So you're aware of that. Do you remember the story I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Okay, yeah. what state was it in? I believe it was Pennsylvania, but don't quote me on it, but that has been a topic amongst the state and uh, international chiefs association. They, they have particular classes at each conference on these topics. It's one of those issues where it's, it's ever evolving. It, it changes on a daily basis because whatever we do to protect ourselves, somebody's going to try to find a way to defeat it. So it's a constant thing. 
of all the places a police department well, would trade grants. So it just you know, it's Thank interesting. You. you know, virtual machines and backups, we can never, ever suffer that problem with. If you're running on virtual machines with adequate backups, it would never occur, period. Uh, and I would highlight that you've got no money in your budget for ransom, right? Not at this point. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to throw $100,000 in it, Tim, I'll, I'll put it to nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I just wanted to hi highlight a little concern no, because we know you're out. running your operations <laughs> tight. Would so, you pay 100000 to get me back? <laughs> Oh, a million or more, a million or more out of this budget. <laughs> Any other questions on administration? Okay, thank you. On to uh, crime control and investigations. Oh, before we do, yeah. the chairman actually has a couple questions. You always do. Uh, well, usually, not, point you. usually not in this section, though. Yeah. I know, I generally stay out of it. This section's not your, your uh, this bowing one, This one's easy for you because it's directed to Christy, so don't worry about it. Uh, Christy, we have, uh, first of all, this uh, 6150, the suffix number on it, computer supplies and expenses. Oh, yeah. When I drill down into the detail page, it's actually titled computer support. So there's a discrepancy there, uh, minor point. Uh, but underneath there has a description for hardware support and maintenance repairs, $15,000. Uh, I want to get some more than that on that, $15,000. That would be the chief, not me. Uh, anyone in the room? Tom Manager is welcome to answer as well. Oh, the deputy chief. Well, actually, we've 6150? Yeah. 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 On page 34, the detail. Hardware support, maintenance, and repairs. Computer yeah. So we've actually gone down 6.65% in that line. Yes. I'm going to have to get back to you on that, Tim, because uh, that's one I deal with with Lieutenant Goditis on. I noticed the same. Note that my primary concern here is identifying fixed assets. Okay. Um, I don't consider that a particular problem. I just want to have further explanation. I'm sure the good lieutenant will be able to answer that pretty quickly for me. <laughs> okay. And uh, I noted consultants in here, I think. Uh, 3920. Yeah, when I see greater than a thousand percent, it's like kind of catches my eye. You know? Yeah, I think uh, I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch uh, our discussions with the selectmen. They they raised the same issue that that is a significant jump. Uh, one of the issues uh, we're dealing with in law enforcement as a whole is mental health. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of stuff, um, PTSD, our requirements, and our. Uh, I, I think our duty to protect our people when they go through a critical incident. And I'll give you an example. So this is really to address PTSD. Well, no, 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 I, I want to be clear. I just do that as one thing. It's to deal with the well-being of our officers. It could be mental health. It could be physical health. Okay. Anytime. Uh, as so a it's chief, health consultations. Part of it, yes. As a consequence of a stressful event on duty. Could be. It could be for any circumstance I deem an officer needs to be evaluated either mentally or physically. I can order that. For duty readiness, basically. Yes, fitness for duty. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. That's so all I need to know. That's what we've seen an increase in, and I feel that's only going to increase more as we become more cognizant and dedicated to dealing with the met, particularly in the area of mental well, uh, health and well-being. Well, the police have a very stressful job, uh, both mentally, psychologically, <coughs> and physically. And I, I think that uh, you know, being sure that everything's up to snuff in those categories is critically important, so I don't have any objection with the, the function of doing it, nor the dollar amount that you've got here. Um, it's just the percentage increase that kind of catches it, the eye. I knew that would right. catch your eye. Mr. Walbert. <laughs> well, and, and I saw the Chief's presentation on this, and it's apropos because I'm actually going to a training on this tomorrow mm -hmm. for my company because, you know, there's awareness issues with people, and you guys had enough stressful job with this. I, I thought it was a great discussion you have, and it's important. And I was actually surprised. Yeah, the $1,000 increase is really kind of misleading at $3,000, but I would they almost expect that, Chief, to maybe increase it. You, you hate to say it in that way, but it's it an will. important <coughs> piece of that. Yeah. It's an important component. I hate to hear it in that way as well. but Well, it's an oh, important component. I, I agree. But yep. We're all done with uh, administration. and. Uh, yeah, well, I, okay. I haven't said I was done yet, but if you say I'm done, I guess I am. So it's well, do you have something? Uh, no, I'm good. More useful I'm good. and helpful? I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, on to the next <laughs> section. Uh, well, I think we were doing crime control and investigation. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes. So any further questions on crime control investigations? Great. Let's move on to traffic control and patrol. <coughs> Which is not easy to say without uh, mm -hmm. Let me see here. No. Any questions on traffic control and patrol? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Training. Any questions on training? Yeah. You know, Christy, as, as I go through, as I'm looking into uh, traffic control, control, I see new equipment here for uh, you know, $35,000. I assume some of that may very well be falling under the fixed asset. Um, I, I have a feeling that you're going to you know, leave here tonight, and probably tomorrow, go through this budget and maybe look at what qualifies and does not qualify for fix, fixed asset, give a new clean look at the whole thing. Is that a fair assumption of my part? It was not a plan, but <laughs> because of fixed assets we usually look at when they're actually purchased and we declare them a fixed asset while they're purchased, not when we're doing the budget because the budget is a proposal and we don't know who's going to actually but get But eventually this has to get mapped over to the DRA Correct, accounts. When it's paid. No, to the DRA accounts for the 232, or uh, MS 232, right? And under there is the capital outlays. Okay, so that, that's what I'm focused on in, in the nature of my questions. Yeah, I haven't figured asset. out exactly where we're going. But so you know I'm what, I think you and I <laughs> need to sit down and have a separate conversation on this as a general topic. And I, and I can otherwise leave it alone for now. And I'll report back to the committee what the results of that discussion is. Oh, Christy will. Mr. LeBranch. Um, we're moving along here so quickly. I, um, under traffic control and patrol, could I still ask a question? Absolutely. Back into that yes. category? I just want to uh, comment that under um, 8100, training and recruitment, um, okay. ammunition purchases, weapons upgrades, and repairs. Um, now, 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 I think you're crossing over lines. Are you in? Traffic control and, and patrol. Training and recruitment. And then 8100. Very last one. Yeah, training and recruitment. Yeah, yeah but you, I think you're in the wrong category because yeah. Well, 8100 in training and recruitment is reflects tuition costs for specialized schools throughout the year by FBI. Oh. If you want to talk about training 8100, oh. that's the ammo. 4202 8100. Excuse me, 4203 8100. No, actually, it's 42104. Right, that's ammunition. That's, that's training, <laughs> that's not traffic control. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, and so I, I don't have to go back. We were. We you were, want to talk about ammo, right? We were. Yeah, yeah we were training. Let's talk about ammo. Okay, that's. <laughs> Okay, now we're right. back to training. We're, we're all done training. with I'm sorry. Uh, traffic patrol and control, correct? Okay. No one has any, any on that? I know what you meant. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> on to training. Mr. LeBranch. Okay. We said. Thank you very much. We said. <laughs> yes. So the ammunition purchases, weapon upgrades, and repairs. Now, the 60 cases, 60 cases of handgun training ammunition. So that's 60 case, cases in addition to the amount that you need for a daily basis. Correct. Okay, that's 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 what I wanted to know. Any other questions on training? Thank you very much. Well, actually, there's one more in Mr. Lebrun. Go thing. ahead. Three cases of taser ammunition. <laughs> I thought the taser was electric. So, oh, that's it's the little wires and things that go with it. It's this. Okay. This okay. is a cartridge that goes into the front. When the electricity hits it, the prongs come out. And, and then each, you have each to officer it. that qualifies every year has to fire a number of co live cartridges to qualify. Okay. Plus whatever we may actually use in our duties. I don't know They're why. They're very expensive. I don't know why I was thinking that you can, can use the same little wire. I wish. Again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, okay. Those I cartridges think it's are a, a one-time use kind of thing. These are one-time use things. What will happen is I don't know sure these go the green door. Yeah. The door blows open when the darts come out. All right. Okay. And then it's done. So you can only use them once because the other thing is. If they connect and they actually pierce the skin, now you have bodily fluids. So they're one time use only. Do they get recycled in any way? No, I don't believe no. is there a recycling program. No, okay. they don't. Mm. So we all learned something about yeah, Thank you for that. Yep. Thank uh, you very much. Mm -hmm. No, nothing else on training, guys? All, all set? set. Thank okay. You. Uh, Regina? When I said guys, I didn't mean to exclude you. So. Oh, I am. Okay. I'm not offended. No. Um, <laughs> questions on support and training? I, I or support services, rather, sorry. I have a question. Mr. 
Frank. Thank you. Uh, Chief, on, on the part-time special officer uh, wages and summer coverage, do you feel you're under budget on that? Because based on what your actuals were in 2017, based on your budget, which was down in 2018, and your actual expenditures uh, through September, it seems that you're under budget on that. Frank, could you tell me what line again you're on? Oh, sure. I'm in uh, support services. Yep. And I'm at uh, 1200. Yeah, 4205 1200. Okay. 4205 1210. And I'm just saying you're under budget. I mean, your actuals are more than what you're budgeting for. Yeah, right. So do you feel you should probably go back and uh, increase those to, to at least meet actual? Here's the problem we're up against is. You know, Mr. Warburton shares concerns about the budget numbers, and we're trying to, you know, looking beyond just the police department, but looking how can we try to make this fit a little bit more palatable. I would love to see a budget pass. I, I hate when we see defaults. It almost comes across as, a, you know, and I know it's not meant that way, but <coughs> it really hits the employees as a lack of confidence sometimes. And when we look at that one, that's one of our bigger items. That's one of our bigger lines, and that is driven a lot by weather. Uh, you know, now the areas where I can try to do different things and to save money, that's one of the areas I can try to do that. But it looks like, based on the actuals and year to date, yep. you know, your best efforts haven't realized that. So, what I'm trying to say to you is maybe we should bump that to at least be equal to that so you're not caught. I'm not going to say no to it. It's where else am I going to have to cut from then? Well, we just say that. Well, why would you have to cut? That's not. Why would you have to cut? Chief. Chief, why would you have to cut? Chief, Chief. I'm sorry. The, the, the question is whether or not, I mean, you, you had overspent that line in 2017, and you're overspending it again, both of those lines. Right. And it, then this year. Cost. So it suggests that the budget number itself is lower than actual experience would suggest. So why would we not put a number in there that actual experience would be suggest? More actual, correct. Uh, I'll certainly accept it. I was trying to be. Frugal. I understand that. I, I mean, is, is there any reason we would not do that? No. Okay. And and where and when you when you've done this last year, uh, that has overspended those two line items, and you're doing it this year as well. Uh, where's that additional money coming from out of your budget? To off the top of my head, I'd have to say it, it, it accounts. You know, I, I kind of work on a bottom line. Uh, I'm, I'm just yeah. wondering what else is what's suffering as a consequence. I'd have to do an assessment of that. Christy, do you have a thought on that? Because you're the one with the numbers. So, well, here's one. Okay. I decided not to go to the IACP this year. Minor number. I have. I have Where is IACP? The International Association of Chiefs of Police. It's okay. one of those things <coughs> in my contract, my things, duties. We're just cutting back in certain other areas. How much is that trip? Well, that probably comes up to about five thousand dollars when you do everything up. All right, which um, I think is important. But little things like that, um, we cut back where we have to to make sure that there's people out on the street mm -hmm. protecting the town, particularly during our busiest seasons. Okay. Um, so uh, specifically, where did all that money come from? I can't answer that for it's you right now. It's in a variety of spaces. Yeah. Basically. I would say that's probably when you looked at it. That's what what has occurred over the years. Whenever we mm -hmm. go over in that line. That's where it usually occurs. Are you comfortable with continuing that practice? I don't know if we have much of a choice. We have to work within oh, our, our budget. I mean, we have a choice here of, of changing that number. I'm certainly willing to accept the change in numbers. Are you comfortable yes. with continuing the practice that we've done this year and last year on this topic? Um, yeah, I mean, I put, okay, that, I put that number in there. Um, thank you. Mr. Uh, LeBranch. Uh, okay. Under the support services going to line to line 3310, outside agencies. So the um, the actual 45,049 that you spent this year, that would be for the um, the offices that were <coughs> here from other towns during the summer. Correct. That, that's okay. correct. That's correct. And they not only brought their own they brought their own equipment, their own vehicles. In some occasions, yes. Yeah, and that worked out very well. I, I, I think that you've been doing that for two summers now, or is it? Uh, this is actually the third. Third, and I have to. I live at the beach, and I have to tell you that 
um, that really seems to work really, really well. Um, the, 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 uh, and, and I think you mentioned at the selectmen's meeting that the policemen that you've been having come um, are now have been here for several summers, some of the same people. They've created a lot of relationships down here with, with some of the folks that they're working with. Yeah. Um, and it's a good recruitment tool for every, you know, for them and for us. Uh, you know, we have a, a great relationship with the University of New Hampshire where it's our busy time, it's mm -hmm. their slow time. Exactly. And then when their busy time sets up, we, we reciprocate and we go up there and they pay our officers <coughs> that way. Right. So that, that's been a good relationship. Uh, we utilize Epping PD a lot because they deal with a lot of crowds at the, the various speedways mm -hmm. and venues they have. Right. And we're very picky about who we bring in, uh, that we know that they kind of work in the same manner we do dealing with crowds. And unfortunately, with the number of you know, people that are intoxicated or under the influence of drugs, you have to have a, a certain level of experience and some patience to deal with those issues. Yes. So you don't become gasoline on the fire. And we want to make sure the people we bring in they're there to help solve, make solve problems, not create them for yeah. us. So, okay. and those programs have been successful. Well, okay. And congratulations, because that program under under your leadership has is really working very, very, very well down Thank at the Mr. Frank. Yeah, I'd like to go back to that. I, I think, you know, in all honesty, I think that that should be increased to reflect the true costs, because somewhere along the line, on that bottom line number, he's we're stealing from Peter to pay Paul. And I don't think that's appropriate. Well, it appears as though uh, the Peter, the guy we're stealing the money from, has got excess money. <laughs> Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to be stealing from him. So that's that's the that's the dilemma. He's Mr. Chairman, can I offer something else? Just to sure. Conversely. I just want to yeah, finish up on one point. The police chief's bottom line budget is not being overspent. It's being it's being managed. It's being managed. So therefore, it's like a water, it's like a balloon. You squeeze one end, the other end expands, kind of stuff. It's all still being contained in that balloon, Chief. Chief, so if you remember when I first became Chief, you and I had some dialogues about you know how budget should be managed and what. And one of the things that you, you did make a good point with me is that where we can, you know, we are a bottom line budget. But I think for me to move forward the budget and, and as I try to expand the knowledge within the department of how we budget. We try to be as accurate as we can as to where we score things when we expend mm -hmm. funds. And in that light, the deputy did remind me, uh, when we did this, we were looking at a, an attrition rate that uh, just, if we, hired, if we hired a dozen, we were going to lose six to eight and have to rehire people. This year, we did experience uh, a, a great recruitment year. We had 12 new officers, and so far, we haven't lost a one of them, which is uh -huh. unheard of in the last five years. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, we have the potential to add another 15 for the summer uh, 2019. We didn't anticipate that. Uh, honestly, we, we, we have been looking at things that were in this kind of rut with recruitment nationwide, but we seem to have turned a little bit of a corner here. Mm -hmm. So when I gave that number in budget, it was with that in mind that we were going to lose half the people we hired, and that, that cost money. We didn't. We're doing pretty good right now. That's not to say next month we're not going to lose them. Mm -hmm. We could, because um, other departments are very uh, always look at us as a source, uh, recruitment source. But we have 15 more potentially going to the academy in the near future. So, the money may be something we want to consider putting back in, um, even though that's the number I presented to the board uh, when we originally did the budget. It's going to be an insignificant increase. I'm, I'm I'm arguing neither for or against. I'm only pointing out. What I what perceive to be the fact. But I think, you know. My people, job is to remain neutral and make sure everyone has an neutral, understanding I'm on, thinking, on, on the matters being discussed. And I appreciate that. But I'm also thinking of the taxpayers in Hampton, and I'm thinking of uh, their welfare, well being, and protection. And I think he should put the money back. At least. Well, he flat. can't. We can. I don't think that having the money there has anything to do with the taxpayers' protection. Right. I have well, total faith short. in Chief Sawyer. And Deputy Chief Hobbs, that they well, will be let's able to just, let's just bring an end to this right now and, and point out that uh, you, you're approaching an, an amendment. If you have an amendment, be specific and make it. Okay, then, okay, I'd like to make an amendment to increase that line. What line? To, to equal at least what they You were talking about two lines. Yeah, earlier. those two line items back to at least flat to what their actual, their actual numbers are. And based on this, we're looking at increase in line 1,200 to... 
at least. 1,200 uh, and 1,210 is what you have been discussing. No, I'm just no we haven't been talking 1,200. Two lines. 1,200 and 1,210, both. Right. Both are under budget. I mean, his actuals have increased over his budget. Right. That's all okay. it's called so I, spending. I, yeah. I'd like to see that increase to at least 226248 That's That's a funding through September 30th. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. So if, I, if we look at that, he's going to exceed that, too. But at least it gives us something. Well, let's get clear on that, Chief. Uh, do you anticipate uh, from September 30th to December 31st that either of those two lie items are likely to increase further? Not significantly. Okay, so okay. we can consider that effectively the year-end number. Yes. Okay, so Frank, your proposal is to uh, increase or to change um, under support services part-time special officer wages to 226-248 and summer coverage full-time offices to 192,663. Is that correct? Is that uh, your motion? Is that your amendment? That's my amendment. Christine's busy with the numbers, so she's going to give us a difference in a moment, I'm but sure. I, I would is, like there a, is there a second sure on that, that amendment? Is second line item going to be sufficient on the summer coverage? Because you did spend two hundred and twenty-four thousand. Well, summer's year. over, so obviously there's no more spending on that. Yeah, I don't believe we're gonna. You won't experience much in that either, other than, other than a full-time officer maybe working a dispatch shift here and there. Do I have a second on Frank's amendment uh, motion to amend? Second. Mr. Moore has seconded Mr. Frank's <coughs> motion. Discussion. Mr. Warburton. I'm not for this motion, and I'll tell you why. If the chief wanted, he's already answered the question. It's in the budget. He presented it. If he wanted it, he would ask us for it. Yeah. My <laughs> question is this, and it's the only question I have on this part of the budget then in parking administration, two major areas I'm interested in. You're looking at part-time police officers. You pay $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. You just said you have your exact words. We've got a great recruitment year, which I'm thrilled, by the way. Yeah. Okay. So Mr. LeBranch didn't go far enough on the accolades and I'm not here to give accolades as far as the wonderful job, but my concern is one of your folks that has come on Hampton Beach is the police chief of Epping. So my question is this, what can we tell the taxpayers that these outside agencies, what are, what are Hampton, what are we paying these outside agencies an hour? People like Chief Wallace and others who have come on Hampton Beach. Because the conversation I hear is, why are we having all these people doesn't matter whether they're good or not from other communities. Why not put more effort and add it maybe to T uh, Chief Hobbs, obviously, has done a good job on this, in really emphasizing the recruitment phase of it? Because this number is never going to really be, it, it could be up and down one year. I think the biggest concern I have, um, much like we talked about when I ran state parks, we had eight state police Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, and your comment last year was they don't have the money. Well, to Former uh, state rep Phil Bean. That was not my comment. Okay, well, whatever it was to come. To former state rep Phil Bean, who will be very missed, why don't we say to the state, you need to provide people on this beach? I, I, I guess, because that's the conversation when I was down there, believe me, they came to me and they said, you better have this. So I'm more concerned about why are we paying, because we're not paying $20 an hour for these outside agencies. And, and I would ask you, Chief, and I don't need the answer tonight. But I think the public would be very surprised or enlightened mm -hmm. by what we're paying Durham, Epping, and other communities. What is the range that we're paying? Because I think you all be astonished at the amount of money we're paying. And I'm not faulting you for having done that, but I think we've got to be very clear on why to your motion, which I'm against, because I think we need to be clear on what we're actually asking and what we currently have and how we can't can't fix what we have. That's okay. that's. What Could I respond? Yeah, go ahead. Christy, do you have the uh, delta on that? How much has it been it's increased? Seventy-two thousand six hundred ninety-five. That's not what I asked. That's uh, what I'm asking. Well, he okay. just asked a question. Oh, seventy-two thousand six hundred and ninety-five dollars. Call it seventy-three thousand for round. Oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about what, what kind of a percentage increase is that? Seventy-three. Less than what? Could I reach? I would. I would like to address the issues. I thought we were talking about my, my questions or my questions. No. Did you ask a question? 
Or did you make a statement? I don't remember. It was a little bit of both. A little bit of both. I was asking in me. So I would Chief, like would you like to respond? I would like to, if okay. that's okay. Please proceed. So to Brian's <laughs> issues, uh, yes, this is the number I presented. But keep in mind, when I pre first presented this number, it was back in July, yeah. which is very early in our season. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was, I believe it was July 10th yeah. when I presented my first budget to the, to the manager. <clears throat> and my methodology was that was that the recruitment for the last 10 years has been very difficult. Attrition's been difficult to manage. This year, we've had a, a good year. We haven't lost anybody from the new class, which we normally lose three or four by now. We haven't lost anybody yet, although somebody walked in with a background check yesterday. So yeah. hopefully that's just the one they're looking at. Um, so moving forward, I couldn't have anticipated that we had a class of potentially 15 at this moment in time. We're usually down to about six to eight. Okay, so we've had a, a pretty good year retaining and recruiting. I couldn't have anticipated that at the time I presented this number. So if that addresses that one part, Brian. The other part, yes, the, uh, the pay that a, an officer coming in uh, from an outside community is going to be far greater than what we pay a part-time officer. Most of the officers that come in are full-time, and they're working at their detail rate, which is far higher than the, the $20 we pay a starting part-timer. So absolutely, Brian, you are correct. That that number is hourly far greater than if it was a hemp, you know, an officer wearing Hampton Green. Do we know that number? I don't know it off the top of my head. We can get an average. I'm sure that would should be too hard to deal. Yeah. And, and the reason I bring this up too, Chief, and and I appreciate. Listen, could, your Brian, I don't mean to interrupt you, but could I finish what oh, I? Oh, I'm sorry. To say? Go ahead. I thought uh, you because were... I think this may answer where you were going. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay. So the question had been asked previously when we started this program with the outside agencies: Why aren't we using the state police? Well, it's very simple. The state police are dealing with the same critical issues we're dealing in law enforcement throughout the country. Staffing, and the workforce has changed, okay? And this is not a criticism of the current workforce, but the folks coming in the door today do not look at it the way I did or even the way the deputy did as a generation behind me. When the phone rang and they offered you extra work, I don't care if it was Christmas Day, you got up from the Christmas table and you went to work. These folks don't operate that way. They want to come in, they do great work, and I want to emphasize that. The work, the work we get from our employees is outstanding, but they look at things different than somebody that's 55, okay? They're not looking for that much extra work. So when you match that against recruitment, which is very difficult, the city of Rochester's down 15 officers, Manchester's always down, Nashville, and these are the people historically that come from us, the state police has the same problem, and then trying to find people that are willing to come in and take that extra work. So that led us to this program. It wasn't a lack of money on the state police. They have the money. It's having the personnel that are willing to come down and do the work has been the issue. And that's across the state. So if that answers any of the, the questions and the issues you raised, Brian. Okay. Uh, I think it... No, I'm not also. I would say this, Brian. I, I think I told I had this interaction Did with you want to follow Mr. Up Henderson. On topic? I want to follow up partly... And he asked the same right. question. Regina, if, do you think? I'm sorry, but this support services, I look at the monthly financials every time I get them from the financial director, and I have a problem with increasing these line items because I have a problem with how it's left up to the town of Hampton to spend $780,000 a year, when most of that, if you look at the monthly financials, is spent July, August, and September. So that tells me it's all spent down on Hampton Beach, which isn't even our property. So uh -huh. I am not for putting any money more than what has been recommended by our chief and our manager. I, 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 I concur you? with Selectman Barnes, and, and, and we'll probably further this discussion at a time, but you and I both know perception. Perception is a big issue in, in this town and other towns. Mm -hmm. Do you, when you talk about offices from other community, we're not talking about offices. We're talking about a police chief mm -hmm. that is probably making $90 an hour, and I want those figures, sitting on Hampton Beach that happened to grow up in Hampton. And I'm not faulting him, but there seems to be something, it, it's just the perception is not right. It's like we're not hiring, so we've got to make it clear to the public. We're not taking offices. In some cases, we're taking chiefs. I, I've never, that was, I'd never heard of such a thing. So when we talk about having coverage, to Regina's point, to me that's all the more reason that we bang the table and sit down with the state and say, listen, this is your beach. Listen, I dealt with it when I ran that beach. 
And I don't see, I don't, what's the worst they're going to do? Say no? Because I, I think at some point, I think, you're talking, talking, I think you're talking to the wrong guy, though. Yeah. No, 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 I understand yeah. it. But we're talking about your budget, and it's hard to, for me, listen, I'm a proponent, uh, and to your point about, um, you know, the employees, I don't know, you made a comment about employees feel bad or something. Let me tell you about when the budget doesn't pass. You and I know that all the union employees are going to get their raises whether the budget passes or not, and all the non-union are going to get their raises. So let's be clear to the public that that's, it doesn't matter whether, in this case, the budget doesn't pass. So <coughs> well, it does, Brian. I think you're well, right. Well, 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 let's get back to the, the well, point I, of discussion yeah, is... Yeah, the amount of money is, we're spending no, on outside... the point is, of discussion is Frank's motion to increase... Wait a minute. Can I just say something? Wait a minute. We're talking 1%. Well, okay, okay. Frank, Frank, we, hold on, hold on, Brian. Okay. We're talking about Frank's motion to increase Right, the and budget. the reason okay. I'm against so it is because us, of what let I just us, said. Let us remember that's what we're discussing. I understand it. That right. is not a question discussion. time. Right. It's a discussion amongst us about how we're going to vote on Frank's amendment. But the, way, the reason, if you had listened to me, that I'm I not voting for this is because of what I just I said. I understand. All right. I never well, that, is, that is relevant to the discussion. I, I hope okay. every word. So let's call on the motion then. Any other discussion on Frank's motion? Let's move the motion. Any yeah. other, oh, we got vote any on other discussion first. on Frank's motion? Seeing none, then I will call for a vote on Frank's motion. Everyone clear on what Frank's motion is? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, can we just specify the amount of increase that that should? It's 72000 It's $72,695 or 0.21%. 0.21%. For those two line items, the twelve hundred right. and the twelve ten. Yeah. That's a combination. Yeah. I just combined two, them. Two lines. All those in favor of Frank's motion, please raise your hand. Mr. Moore, Mr. Frank. All those opposed. Everybody else except me who's abstaining because I'm Mr. Neutral. <laughs> when did you change? <laughs> when I became chairman, of course. It's my job to be neutral. Can I buy Mr. Ladd lunch on that comment? <laughs> oh, I'm very good. Okay. Now we're back to uh, the support services section. Is there any further questions or discussions on support services? No. Nope. Mr. LeBranch. I just want to point out on line 4310, um, there's quite a large increase. And that's because <coughs> you are going to buy six new radios every year from oh. now on. That's the game plan. Oh, yeah. Well, OK. That's all I have to say. Oh, that's Thank my my, lo my once beloved Ooh. radio maintenance line, isn't it? We clean it up. <laughs> like I said, once beloved. Now that it's cleaned up, it's, I heard you. it's like, uh, <laughs> well, nothing to say. Those radios don't cost $5,000 a piece, right? So it's not a fixed uh, asset. Three. 3000 Tim. Yeah. Right. So it's not a fixed yeah. asset. Yeah. Not cheap. Mr. Moore. I didn't get a chance to ask before we took the final vote of the motion, but mm -hmm. I heard Brian state that the Epping police chief might be making in a range of $90 an hour versus if we had a lower patrol person who probably needs the money a lot more than the chief mm -hmm. does. That's in my opinion. Did even that to them. But my, if I can trip you right saying we don't, we can't get those lower people anymore. We have to get anybody we can. Is that true? No, I think you misunderstood part of the conversation. Yeah. The $20 an hour officer is a Hampton special officer, right. new guy. That's going to be about $20 an hour we pay them. Right. But with the shortage of those, when we resort to going to outside agencies, we're also subject to how do they disperse the extra work that's offered in their department. So in, I'll give you an example. In the Hampton Police Department, when we have any extra work, it goes through what we call a seniority list. Okay, So it goes through the full-time officers once, then it goes through a second time, and then it goes to the part-time ranks before we would get to somebody in the administrative level, like myself and the deputy. Not every department operates that way. So mm -hmm. I can't tell you how that's disseminated in the Epping, Exeter, or any other agencies. No, that's you, really you did it down the beach. Huh? You had, you, this Epping officer was at the beach in Hampton. Correct, but I don't, I don't have the, the ability to call Epping PD and say, I only want your low-paid guys. They have contracts. We have collective bargaining agreements. They have one, too. So whatever the manner in which Epping PD gives out their extra work, if I ask for those officers to come to Hampton, I don't get to hand pick them. That goes through their process. I don't pick them. It's yeah. I don't. I can't let say you give me the guys. Let me follow up on that. Sure. If you have, uh, if you called up Epping and said I need an officer, 
at this fixed rate, and it happened to be that Epping's union contracts afford only the most junior officers at, at that rate, then Epping would say to you, we don't have anyone available at that rate, correct? They would tell me they couldn't fulfill that request right. simply because it's a violation of their CBA. Right. Mm -hmm. Unless there was a junior officer available, then they would correct. say, yeah, we got one. So you could you actually say, here's a ceiling for what we're willing to pay. Can you send anybody? And no, I won't say, do that. Yes or no. I you could do that. No, I won't do that. You won't do that, but we Can't. could do that. Because it would violate their CBA. That's not your concern. That's their concern. No, that is my concern. No, if, uh, if, if you're yeah. offering the minimum pay rate. I would say we're getting operational right now. Well, we're, we're, we're way down the path of operation. I think that's where we, where we are right now. Is yeah. We're trying to understand um, when I hear you say that you can't do this, and I'm trying to understand why you can't do this. He told you. No, he didn't. They have a CBA. They have a CBA. And I we can't don't ask them to violate their CBA. And you're not. You're just saying, I have this money. Do you have anyone available to take it? And that's up to them to decide whether it comports to their CBA or not. Well, we would have to change the understanding of how we bring these people in. We would have to say, okay, instead of following your CBA, it says, you know, mm -hmm. it's called in this order and this is what an officer is paid. Oh, no, no, I'm not suggesting I would that have to say, okay, we're only willing to pay up to $20 an hour, okay? The problem with that is we wouldn't get anybody. Right, exactly. and that's what I wanted you to highlight right there. Yeah, right. because you we could, you could put, put this way. You could put a ceiling on it, but that would also limit your ability to recruit. Right. Put it this way. Part of the reason is we have to do this is I can't get the support from the state police that I got in the past, although it got better last year. So hopefully that will reduce the need. But additionally, if I'm offering $20 an hour and I don't put any shifts out to an outside agency that aren't offered in-house first, that means they've already gone through the Hampton officers. That means nobody took it mm -hmm. for $20 an hour. It's going to be based on their overtime rate or their detail rate, and I wouldn't expect an, uh, an officer from another agency to do any less. Okay, so we're all clear on that point, right? Yes. The only okay. person that they're going to send for 20 bucks an hour is the part-time part -time animal control officer. Which may, may, may or may not be acceptable, depending on which part of the beach he is patrolling. <laughs> I'll pick on the beach. <laughs> all right. All right, so that? any further... Uh, well, we've them our questions on uh, support services. Thank you. Yes, I have one. Mr. Wall, or Mr. Lapp. It's something I ask every year. How many horses do we have now? How many what? Horses. horses. The same answer I give you every year, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But we have a different horse now, right? Yeah, we just, re we just swapped one out. We have Rocky now. So we still have two, but they're actually two younger ones, or at least one. Uh, younger one, one younger one, and we're looking to replace the other one pretty soon until he's getting on in age. So we're, we're all done with support yes. services, right, uh, Mr. Morrow? Yeah. Okay. Frank. Why do we have a mounted patrol that's on the beach? Like that. Oh, that's oh. a long story. Yeah. No, I just <laughs> want to know. Just a clarification. It's a good that thing. program was started back in 1981 in a response to, um, it was a couple of issues. Back then, it was the crowd control issues, and the horses were very useful in, in helping quell those issues. But today, it's less of the crowd control, but it's more of the PR aspect of it. They're, they're just so we support the beach effort with our hot mounted patrol, right? And how Primarily, much yes. And how much yeah. do we spend on that? Uh, the mounted, I'd have to look that up for you. Hold on. <laughs> There's a lot of, Frank, he's looking it up, and in the meantime, I want to make a comment to you. There's a lot of money in this police budget that supports the beach. The other thing I would like to make a point, Frank, is that was voted on by the voters as a Warren article, so even if I wanted to cut it, I can't. I understand that. Just, just curious, just curious. Yeah. Voters voted it. Well, they voted it for one year. They didn't vote it for all eternity. Uh, I think that, I believe, my belief is... You mean the Warren article says for all eternity? I believe that I don't have the ability to cut that amount of patrol from the budget. Can we get back to the meeting? We are in the meeting. Are you talking about 1981 horse? Yeah. The, Frank, the number you're, you're asking for. <laughs> All I was trying to point out is we accept certain items for the beach, yet when we make recommendations to modify, you know, some protection, you know, it's a, it's a he said, she said. Yep. So that's all I'm saying. All right. So, do you want the number? <laughs> if you want to give it to me, I'm happy to take it. Thirty-three seven six one. Yes. 
Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Have we yeah. got, have we got private grants in the past for funding that? Uh, not grants. We we have a support Fund group uh, that Friends of the Mounted Patrol. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what raises. are they? A five oh. I think it's a five oh three or whatever. Five oh one five three. Yeah. And so they they raised a lot of money for us. So the last horse that we purchased, uh, there were no ton, town funds expended on the travel expenses uh, and the price of the horse were all covered by the Friends of the Mounted. So they're a great group of people uh, trying to keep that program going. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're all done with. Uh, Support <coughs> services, right, everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, on to special details, which of course is a topic we have yet to touch, right? Any questions or comments on support, uh, special details? <coughs> no. Thank you. Any? Now on to uh, police station and buildings. Any questions or comments on police station and buildings section? Mr. Walberg. Fourteen years ago, Chief. I can't believe we moved into the new police station. <laughs> Have has the um, the building maintenance aspect over the years have been, and included with that the electric and heat and water? Have we seen it, is, it from an investment point? It's pretty stable, or are we seeing a lot? It has been. Well, what you're starting to see again, 14 years in a marine environment. Right. Um, we did some of the things. You know, when we built the place, you know, we're trying to cut and save money, and they, they call it value engineering, and I call it going with the cheapest thing you can get. Um, one of the things that occurred is we had a, a situation where the air conditioning was throwing out heat when it should have been throwing out the air conditioning, mm -hmm. and the heat system was throwing out the air conditioning. Was heating. What happened was up on the top of the building, you see the vents. Right. Okay. We didn't go with marine grade vents. They rusted shut and threw the whole system out of whack. Oh, and we had to spend a lot of dollars to replace that and some of the components of the air circulation system. <coughs> Those are the things you're going to experience. Uh, we've been looking at. Um, some of the issues that have occurred, like the fences, the gates we have, those things yeah. over time break down. You have to replace them. We've had a number of the uh, the light poles in the parking lot yeah, have come down because of those windstorms we've exhibited. <laughs> so we're getting to a point where I'm looking at the building that in the next couple of years I'm going to have to come in and look for money to recarpet the place because the carpets are showing 14 years worth of wear and tear yeah. in a very busy police department that also hosts a lot of training and does a lot of events uh, out of that facility. Uh, we just replaced, and we used asset forfeiture money to replace the gym equipment because, hey, we want our folks to be physically fit. They use the equipment, but they beat the heck out of it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but we, we were able to avoid a budgetary. We had money in asset forfeiture, which I'm allowed to use for physical fitness equipment. So we redid the whole gym with that money. So we're starting to come to that area where we're going to have to start looking at stuff, and we may have to come, to, uh, come to, you know, not this year, but maybe next year. Oh, yeah. Thank some you. items that we're going to have to replace. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions? No. That's it for the uh, police department budget. Well, Just one out of four. That. Uh, <laughs> I haven't forgotten you, Chief. <laughs> okay. Our Chief of Police also uh, is in charge of emergency management, which is our next line item. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he's. Christy, do you have any presentation on this you're going to make? <laughs> okay. Uh, so I will make it. The chief is going to be delighted in explaining to us why this budget is up over a thousand percent. Well, because the budget had forever, since I've been in this department, has been a thousand dollars. Which, if you look around, I mean, I'd love to point to a couple of places and say we should be doing it this way, but when you look around us, it's kind of all over the map. So, a lot of the money when we do, uh, you know, we participate in the Seabrook drills, and those are coming up next year. Uh, we've had a number of these uh, weather issues where we invoke our emergency management team, even though there's not a declared emergency. It just seems uh, similar to when we had the uh, the outbreak down at the beach this summer, that we put that under the roof of emergency management, even though classically that's a health officer issue. Because of the multi-jurisdictional response, that seemed a natural place, so we wind up spending money that winds up coming out of department budgets as opposed to trying to get a handle on that unified system of emergency management. So I ask that we take the money that we receive uh, quarterly from uh, the state for our participation, just add that number up and give that to us at least as a starting point as a budget. Okay. To me, I think we need to build on that a little bit, but it's at least a starting point. Okay. Any questions? I have discussion. Mr. Ladd. Do we have a designated evacuation center for the town? 
Yes, we do. Uh, in the, for the radiological plan? Uh, for either flooding or the radiological For the radiological plan, that's a state plan, there is a, an evacuation site that we go to. It's Dover, New Hampshire. Dover, it's up in Dover. Yeah. Do we have anything in town for flooding or other Issue. We don't know. We are not. Uh, there is no shelter designated by Homeland Security in the town of Hampton. What we routinely do is we open up the, the police station training room as a warming station. A lot of these storms are very intense at the beginning, but then dissipate pretty quickly. The longest I think we've ever had anybody stay in our building was about 12 hours before mm -hmm. we could get them into their homes, get heat going, or get them someplace else with a family member. Um, opening up a shelter is a very daunting task. I know a lot of people in the past have think, you know, been very forthright and demanding that we should do it. And only because I've been doing it for this long and seeing what we deal with, I don't think it would be a good idea or a good expenditure of money simply because if we get into a situation where we need to open up a, a center, we need to get these people away from here so we can focus on dealing with the issues down here. We need to get them to a place where they can get medical attention, where they can deal with if they have pets with them and deal with those issues that if we're all dealing with a flood or some, uh, some major catastrophe in town, we don't have any assets left to man that. And that's the key thing. You've got to have assets to man your evacuation centers. Where would that be under the current reality? Where would these people go for that help? If we had to evacuate an area yeah. for a storm? I would contact um, my counterparts in New Hampshire Homeland Security Emergency Management, let them know that I had this many people that I need to find housing for for the foreseeable, for the next 48 hours. Mm -hmm. They would designate a site for me, either a National Guard shelter or they may utilize the, I like the radiological plan. I know some people don't like that plan, but it's a good basic footprint for us down here on the seacoast that if we have to evacuate areas and utilize assets from the state, because we practice so much with them, there's relationships built that we can get things done fairly quickly mm -hmm. uh, to respond to those things. But in the event we use something in Hampton, we have an agreement with SAU 90, uh, with the superintendent, uh, that I believe all of their schools now have generators and cafeterias, that we will be able to house people and feed them for a short period. It's the manning over a length of time that becomes problematic. So you have an academy in particular in mind? Uh, well, they're in transition right now. I mean, so once the construction is complete. Once it's complete, yeah, because they'd have a big enough facility right. being the gymnasiums where if we had to bring in the National Guard and bring in cars, we'd have a place to set those up. Yeah. Right. Any other questions, and, Mr. Lev? And you purchased a couple of high water military use surplus vehicles? No, we haven't purchased anything. It's a it's a decommissioning program that the military has for law enforcement, and, and it's anything the military has in its range that you can art articulate that you could use in your law enforcement mission you can put in a bid for it. So right now we have one truck that we've accepted. There's some mechanical issues we're having worked on it, but it's, an, it's got low mileage. And it's more an issue of these things sit in depots sometimes for years. And, if, and I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a wrench, but those guys will tell you that's probably one of the worst things for the vehicle for things like brakes and transmissions. Mm -hmm. So we're working through those problems on this truck, but I'm, <laughs> I'm hopeful to have that. Uh, in our inventory here pretty quickly so that if we have to get firefighters down into those areas with the boat and all that, we have a vehicle and we're not sending in a night, a vehicle that's designed for harsh terrain. Yeah. A fire engine isn't designed to go into water. These how, are. I look forward many, to that being in our fixed asset program as well. Uh, how many trucks? <laughs> Whatever you want, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> how many trucks would be appropriate to meet the, uh, uh, the need? <laughs> well, I would, in the end, like to get three to four, and here's why. They always, the people that have used this program for years, you always want to have, want to have as a spare to get parts so you're not waiting on parts from DOD because you can wait months. If you have one that maybe isn't in the best shape but it, it's serviceable, you use it when you have to, but you can also start taking it apart if you needed parts for the others. Yeah. Any other? Mr. LeBranch. <clears throat> just want to point out that uh, <coughs> that when you made the, um, when you talked about this to the Board of uh, Selectmen, that basically the $12,464 is a wash because you're yeah. three and five. The money know. comes back. So uh, it's, it's a wash. It's in here. That you have to have it in there for the budget, but... Basically, it's a Thank you, Mrs. LeBranch. Any other questions or comments on emergency management? Uh, I have one final question. We have discussed in the past <coughs> an emergency management committee. In my senses, you think we may end up going there, but we're not at the point where we yet need to go there? I think what we have to define is by statute, you have to have an emergency management director. Okay? It's not a committee. 
No. It's up to an individual town as to what they, you know, you look around us and different towns use it in different fashions. Seabrook uses it extensively for a variety of things. I don't think we would go that route here. I think really what we need to focus, the area I wish we could focus on, uh, but I just don't have the time, is the flood issues. Because we're having people coming in on a consistent basis dealing with repetitive flood damage. Now there's a series of different grants, but you really need somebody that can sit down and really look at those, because some of them are, you know, one of them is basically, your house has had repetitive damage, they used it up, I believe, in Allenstown when they had the floods up there. It's a retreat program. We're gonna buy your house at market value, it's gonna be deeded, it can be never built on again, the house will be torn down and we're done with the problem, we'll walk away. That's one program. The other programs tend to be either the owner of the property that's had the damage or the community has to have a fund to pay the cost up front and then you have to submit for reimbursement. I would not be in favor of that program because there's no guarantee you're going to get reimbursed and now the town is on the hook with say we have to pay $60,000 to raise a house down on Island Path and that it could be that expensive to raise it up into those areas where, where you're not having the, the repetitive damage. And all of a sudden, for some reason, the federal government of FEMA decides we're changing the rules by a paragraph and you're no longer eligible to get that money. That's not a path I would think that the, the taxpayers would want to go down. Um, but we need somebody that, that can be very versed in those things. Now, uh, conservation's doing a great job. Ray Ann's been helping with that. But I think as part of emergency management, having a committee of people that take that particular thing on and can give the director advice give the town manager advice on those issues because the dealing with FEMA and we're, we're dealing with it now is <laughs> is daunting. It just seems the that a, a lot of, well this is, a lot of people in the community would be able to help you if you had a mechanism to allow them. No, yep, I agree. There's, yeah. there's a lot of skilled people that I'm aware of that have had backgrounds that yeah. would be very suitable to, to assist us in that mission. I just think it's unreasonable that you be, expect Ex be expected to be the FEMA representative, the health representative, the evacuation representative. The well, we break those things. Board. We have a great team, we, and we and, yeah. and that's why we do the drills, and I and I get people to get involved in them, because I can't do it all. You're correct. We delegate between uh, Chief Ayotte and I. We have a pretty good team, including the building inspector, public works, does the transportation for us. So. It's just daunting to get it together and coordinate. And that's truly what an emergency management director does. We're a coordinator. When it gets beyond our ability to handle a problem, somebody's got to coordinate that efforts with state and federal authorities to come in and, and, and what's the proper thing to do. That's truly the role. Um, but we can expand on it. There's nothing that says we can't use it for more things. Any other questions on the budget of the emergency management? Thank you. On to your other duty, Chief, which is... <coughs> Supervising animal control. <coughs> As you know, Pete uh, McKinnon retired last uh, about a year ago uh, after 30 years with us. So we now have uh, Tony Palmazano, town resident, uh, as our animal control officer. And if there's any questions on that program, I remember you say you used to call it repeat, and you can't do that anymore. Uh, that was so <laughs> easy. I'd come well, in. Why and can't you call it retone? Because he's a big guy and he probably <laughs> wouldn't laugh. <laughs> 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 Any questions on animal control, Mr. Walbert? So, Chief, I just want to, and by the way, uh, Pete McKinnon is, well, the best. So, I mean, uh, just one of the best ever. My question is, on regular wages, you have one senior animal control, I, I didn't know we called them senior animal control <laughs> officers, at start step 41907. What is the range? So that's going to, that's step one. What is that going to go up to eventually? I mean, is it going to go up to 70000 or 60000 Well, no, that's control. Uh, the animal control officer is part of the uh, collective bargaining unit with the right. Teamsters. So whatever benefits you get in range is, is controlled by the CBA. So I don't have that in front of me, so I can't tell you what the top step is on that right now. So my other, uh, thank you. My other question, and, and all the other stuff outside of this next question is fine. I understand the supplies and everything. Overtime wages, why isn't it 10000 or why isn't it 2000 Why is it, because my, my question is, we got spoiled with Pete McKinnon, so you could call him on a Saturday morning or a Saturday yeah. night, and believe me, I did, or a Sunday. I understand that's not the case here. The hour is 7 to 3.30 or something, Monday through Friday. I'm just asking. Those are the principal hours, but he is so, subject to calling on overtime. Right, so what, where did the 5500 how would we know, how, how would that number, how would you know what to put in that number? 
I got to be honest, it was one of those ones where we had a changeover in personnel, and we seem to be getting more and more calls for things that are, if you look at what the animal control officer by definition does, mm -hmm. it's primarily canine. It's dealing with domestic animals. But we have a lot of issues going on in this community dealing with wildlife issues right. that people call us and they ask for help. And we'd love to tell them, you got to call Fishing Game, but Fishing Game, they have one Fishing Game officer for this area. And he's not always available. So when somebody's got a raccoon in the basement or in the attic, we're going and we're going to deal with it. We're not going to leave a citizen high and dry dealing with an animal problem that our animal control officer also has a extensive training. He was a canine officer for Essex County yeah. for many years. Yeah. Um, he was a former police officer with us and he's gone out on his own and done a lot of training prior to get accepting this position. So he's capable of, of doing uh, a lot of things that we didn't do in the past. Uh, and more people, it just seems like more people are calling us, Brian. I mean, <coughs> every time I turn around he's rescuing an owl or a hawk <coughs> or taking him up to the, the uh, folks up in Epping that have the the rehab facility. Right, yeah, for the, it just I, seems we've been, we, we've been hit with a, a spike in it. Maybe it's temporary. I, I can't tell you that. I, and the, the reason I bring that up, and, and I can appreciate that, yeah. but as an addendum to what the role is, mm -hmm. 15 years ago, you pick up the phone on a Saturday afternoon, you call the police department, can you send Pete McKinnon out? Always came out. Sunday, holidays. Yeah. What do we tell the public? What is the current situation? Because I, I love... We, the animal control office is so important in the town. I agree. But what, if I'm understanding the position, what it is now, for the public out at large watching this on a weekend or a weekend night or after hours, they still would call the police department. Is that something that the answer would be, well, call us back Monday? I'm just trying to. No, we, uh, like I said, Tony comes out uh, pretty consistently. If, if he's in town, he'll come out. He, he's, he, he loves his job. He loves doing it. He loves coming out to help people. Um, we had a, a, a citizen in town that didn't know what to do because on her cellar door she had a massive wasp nest mm -hmm. and didn't know what to do. Now, ironically, Tony happens to be a beekeeper <laughs> as a hobby. So he grabbed his bee suit, went down, not really the animal control officer's job, but he was trying to help. And we, you know, when we got a citizen in need, I don't like hearing the words, it's not my job. Mm -hmm. Somebody calls us, we're there to solve problems, and m most times when a citizen doesn't know who to call, they're going to call the police department or the fire department. And if we have the means to help somebody right. without increasing liability and risk to the town, obviously, we're going to do it. Even if it's not traditionally a role of that employee, we're going to do what we can do to help that citizen. So Thank you. I anticipate you'll see... I, don't, I haven't heard of anybody complaining that we're not being responsive in that area. So if you have heard something, please let me know. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Morrow. I let you know last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we dealt with that. We dealt with that. We did? Because when I talked to him on the phone yeah. to come down to at least speak to the people, the dogs that barking constantly on and off without good. And he basically told me he wouldn't come. He, he only works from 7.30 to 3.30. And uh, my job was that... The, and he wouldn't come down unless he had at least, to the people, three or four complaints. That, those are his words. Okay. And then I said, well, how do I go? Yeah, well, call, if it's midnight, what do you do? He said, well, call up the police station. I'm going to call the police station up at midnight and report it. Well, when I get three or four calls from it, then I'll go down and see him. Well, I Dave. hope that's changed because what you just said, it sounds like it has changed. Well, Dave, Hopefully here's what I'd ask you. You were new at a job before, right? Me. You were new at a job at some time in your life, right? Were you an expert at it then? I would bet you you weren't. My point was when I was new at mm. a job, I would do anything at any time for anything. even, even But people have history. to learn their job first, Dave. And they have to understand he comes in and does his job, and he looks at the job, and I think I just went on ad nauseum about we're doing more than we've ever done. He had just started the job when you called me. He was like two weeks on the job when you called me. So he's trying to work within the parameters that is established in the contract and by rules. As we begin expanding, you start seeing that. But to criticize somebody in their first couple of weeks of a job, I'm sorry I don't agree with you. Okay. He's done a great job. Are there any other questions on animal control budget? No? Okay. Thank you. We are done with animals for the moment. I don't think I have any more. 
Uh, yeah, you do. I do. You have on your budget book. I thought I was going to get that one by you. You have on your budget book says tabbed uh, parking administration, but which is actually labeled other general government parking enforcement unit. And Christy has a wonderful presentation entitled Parking Enforcement Unit. And I'm sure the chief would like to hear from Christy in her presentation, right? It's a great presentation. Christy, do you think? <laughs> Enforcement. Um, with the adjustments that you'll be seeing when we go when the chief goes through the budget, the actual budget is up 46.39% over the 18 default. The total budget is up $43,482. Wages are up 60.67% or $39,667. Utilities are up 8.78% or $215. The lease um, for the Church Street lot is up 4.76% or $1,000. And items not categorized, which happen to only be supplies and expenses in this case, is up three thousand or is up 53.06% or $2,600. And I show you the breakdown of the pie chart there. I threw in a slide of in maybe interest to some. It's basically this breakdown going back to 2013, the revenue um, compared to the expenses. And then I break down further for you. I'm not going to read this entire thing to you because the chief's going to go through a lot of this, but it's showing you the breakdown in the part-time wages has, is increased by $13,000 or $835. 7000 of this is related to uh, the parking lot supervisor position is in this proposed budget becomes a parking lot enforcement director, and that has a $7,000 increase there. And then the part-time parking enforcement officers that were in the police department budget have been moved out of the police department budget and into this parking enforcement um, budget in that uh, is up $6,835. The seasonal wages is uh, where we categorize all of the individuals who run the daily operations of the lots for Ashworth, Island Half, and the Church Street. That is increased by $25,832. Um, a lot of that is related to the hours of operation it being increased to maximize revenues there. Utilities are increased based on their average spending. If you look at the averages, um, you'll see that those lines are either being overspent or underspent, so we adjusted them accordingly to better reflect what is average spending <coughs> in those categories. The Church Street parking lot is a lease that we have with the diocese, and that's up $1,000. It's increased $1,000 each year. Um, so for a five-year lease. I shouldn't say, don't make it sound like it's forever. It was for a five-year lease, mm -hmm. and in each of the five years, it increased by $1,000. And supplies and expenses is increased by $2,600, largely related to operational changes, which the chief will go over with you. But um, a lot of that in the supplies and expenses is related to signage for the lots and the <coughs> tickets that we, that we are issuing to the, uh, patrons of the lot as a, in, they used to basically just give off the roll <coughs> so that you buy a dollar store. So we were trying in an effort to make it harder to duplicate the process. The um, Lieutenant Gidley at the police department came up with a new ticket. And so a lot of the uh, expenses and supplies and expenses are related to um, things that they're trying to make better down in the lot. And I think that's the last slide. Okay. And the uh, chief has more, Christy. I think, in regards to operations that he's going to share. Um, and I'm sure he will. But Christy, I wanted to ask you, uh, the administration of the town-owned parking lots was done by the former Parks and Recreations Director, right? Correct. And uh, that, was, that was included in her pay as part of the parking Parks and Recreation Department supervisor, right? Or department head. Mm. She didn't get any extra money for administering the parking lots. No. Right. So. Nor is the chief, I don't think. We had a personnel change as a consequence of the turnover at the uh, department head of the Parks and, and, and Recreation yeah. Department, right? And I don't know whether the new person in that position is getting the same pay 
I don't recall. Are they getting the same pay as the former uh, head was getting? I have to go look it up and see. I don't yeah. know off the top can, of my head. Can you get back to us employees. on that? Yep. Um, in any case, um, we're basically getting a free ride with Diana on, in terms of administrating the parking lot. And now uh, Selectman and Town Management has decided to administer these parking lots in a different fashion, apparently as a consequence of the personnel changeover. Uh, and so I just wanted to highlight that background for you all. Now, does anyone have any questions on Christie's presentation? And I'll get to the chief right after that. Just on what Christie presented. Just this is Mr. LaBranche. Christie, the um, slide that revenue and expense history. Um, so the revenue for 2018, you have 567216. Is that the parking lot revenue or is that the parking lot revenue plus the tickets? It's both. It's the parking lot revenue plus what we call parking enforcement, which is mostly tickets, tickets. yes. Okay, that answers the question. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. How mm -hmm. much is that in tickets? Because the previous years it wouldn't be including tickets. No, but since parking enforcement. I understand why you couple them together, yeah. but it's not comparative as a consequence year to year. Yeah, because you, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Christy, you went, I went back, back, and put went all back year to year and took oh, the you numbers. you put the parking tickets in in the prior years as well? Okay, <coughs> thank you for that. To make apples and apples. Thank you for that. And by the way, you keep referencing default budget, 2018 default budget. Yes. Isn't it actually the operating budget for 2018? It is the operating budget. So, yeah, it's not, yeah. not, it's an operating budget, not a default That's budget. Correct. It happens to have been born from a default budget. Right. But it's an operating budget, okay? Any other questions, Mr. Warburton? Okay, I have, this, this is a big area of concern. On the presentation, though. No, you said, it was, it, it, Christy, you go to the chief, no? no. Well, the chief has questions a, on uh, Christy's the presentation. No, I don't have Okay. Any questions. questions on Christie's presentation? No. No. Chief, you're dying to say something, I'm sure. <laughs> say it. Not really. I can sit here and be quiet. Okay. I mean, All right. <laughs> Let's no. go right yeah. into the parking enforcement unit, yeah, uh, which is the only section in this budget. Uh, yes, questions on that, Mr. Walburton? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, help me out here, uh, Chief. So parking enforcement director, is that Mr. DeMarco? Mr. DeMarco holds a position year to year as the supervisor of the parking lots. But we were going to consolidate enforcement and the lots into one entity. So we're creating a, a different position that's the director of parking because it's going to be more encompassing than just the parking lots. Excuse me, Brian, may I ask a question? Uh, Mr. LeBranch is treasurer of the village district. Who is in, who's the uh, kingpin on those parking lots? Mr. O'Neill? The kingpin. Yeah, the, the, who runs the parking lot? Mr. O'Neill, right? Wait, yeah. a, wait a minute. I can answer that, mm. Brian, okay? Um, the kingpin is the chairman, Chuck Rage. Okay. He's the, he's the king. Now, we have employees. No, I'm, I'm just Sorry, I used the wrong uh, name. And we have employees as well. Yeah. Okay, but, but the Who's the supervisor of the parking lots is my question. Well, it's actually the parking lot director now. That's his new title as okay. of this past year. It's Michael, uh, Michael O'Neill. Okay, yes. thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. Sorry, Brian. Go ahead. So let's let's start here. So years ago, we had Tom McGowan. Yes. He ran all the parking lots, right? <coughs> okay. Well, well, he was here when you were here in '95. But anyway, so Victor Marco has been a. I, I love all these titles, by the way. That's another thing that drives it. Goes with the <laughs> precinct too. It's just getting crazy. So we now, and I, I need to be clear on this because I think I got my answer, but I don't know if I got it. The parking enforcement director is not Vic DeMarco. Vic works on a year-to-year -year contract. So, yeah. So right now, so, no, this is okay. a new position. So this summer he worked as supervisor of the parking lots, right? Correct. Are you telling me that this parking enforcement director is Mr. Gidley? I don't believe I said that. Oh, okay. So we have, we're proposing this position, right? Parking enforcement director? Yes. Okay. Lieutenant, Gid Lieutenant Gidley is a lieutenant within the police department. Right, I understand that. So maybe I should have had some opening comments to clarify some of this thing. So well, no, I know. That, yeah, well, let me clarify okay. what happened, what occurred. Oh, wait. Would you like to make an opening statement? Yeah, I would. Now, I, I, I dropped the ball on that one. I should have done that because maybe I could have clarified things a little more and taken away. Yeah. So when the rec director uh, retired, the decision was made that um, 
the parking lots were going to be put under the direction of the police department. So I ta tasked Lieutenant Gidley with overseeing that operation and working with uh, Vic DeMarco to get the things up and running because Vic is a part-time seasonal employee, so he, he's not he, he wasn't up here at the time that the change was made. Okay, so we had to get going to get things done because there were a number of facility issues that we had to deal with and some issues that we wanted to do with security and safety mm -hmm. of our employees and the funds. So we began going down that path and I gave that to Lieutenant Gidley as part of his extra duties to do within the police department. This was not a, it's going to the police department and that's where it's staying forever. This was kind of, this was on the fly when Diana retired, we weren't quite sure what the town wasn't quite sure what they're gonna do. It just made sense, we're right there. Um, we can help oversee it with the officers and utilize them to move monies around as opposed to having a, a citizen carrying large sums of cash in their personal vehicles, unsafe. So it just the decision was made for those reasons, at least temporarily, to put that under the direction of the police department and me as the chief. As we progressed, it seems like that's where it's going to stay for at least this time. So I propose that we take all the parking issues we deal with and put them under one entity. I did that because I look at other communities and the way they do things. Now, you, some places you have a police department and you have a separate parking enforcement group. In some communities, you have a police department with a parking enforcement division. And I looked at that model. Me, Chief. Yeah, go ahead. That, that proposal is not reflected in this budget because it's not been adopted yet, right? I believe it has. That's what this budget is. Your reflects. proposal is, has been adopted by the Board of Selectmen? I believe so. Okay, continue to explain yeah. it then because yeah. then it's rolled. So looking, I looked at the model that Concord has. And some in your eye, you know. Yeah. Well, that's what happens with my eyes when I don't have the glasses on. Okay, all right. They have very tired eyes. If I'm looking at computers all my life. <laughs> Me too, man. <It's> <laughs> so anyhow, I looked at the Concord Police Department and had a conversation with some folks that are up there working and just how does it work. And it just kind of made sense to me that if we're going to continue to operate this entity, then I kind of like the model they had. They, they have a group of civilians mm -hmm. that does their meters and their pay to park lots, and they handle that all but they're under the police department, similar to our animal control budget. The animal control office is a separate budget, yeah. but responsive to the police chief. And that's kind of what I was looking at with this, is try to how to model this. So that's how we got to this, and that's what this budget does reflect. So all of the parking issues throughout town, whether they're town-owned parking lots or town-owned highways slash roads, mm -hmm. Uh, are all going to fall under this umbrella now? The vast majority of the enforcement, police officers will still write parking tickets where it's appropriate, but if I can free police officers up from that duty mm. at key, very busy times like the weekends and have the civilians do it because they can and they're at a much lower pay rate, mm. that helps free up officers to do the police work as opposed to those type of things. Mm -hmm. And did I also hear uh, something about, um, what's that? You know, you buy the ticket at the parking lot and you put the little kiosk. sticker on, on your uh, the kiosk. Situation. Pay and display. Pay and display. Pay and display. Pay and display, yeah. That's the magic phrase, yeah. That, has it been actually decided that we're going to do pay and display? Uh, it has not been des decided. Um, I am a big proponent of that. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should maximize our revenues in our parking. Uh, you know, everybody else in the beach is maximizing their ability to, mm -hmm. to uh, make those revenues and I just want if if this is going to rest with the police department then I want to do the best job I can as the chief and overseeing that to maximize those revenues so that may be an option. As I recall you, you did express concern about you know you being in the revenue generating business as police chief and I want you to know that I share that concern very deeply. When I offer that when I say that though understand what I'm saying is I am worried when people say we should have quotas for police officers writing any kind of ticket because that's, I think people look at that as a source of revenue, and it is a source of revenue, but that should not be the primary driving force for a police officer to take an official action. <coughs> so when we look at the police department running the parking lots, I think that's a little bit different because people are asking for that service as opposed to you getting pulled over, and I don't think anybody wants to get pulled over and get a ticket from us. 
there's a difference. I would I, I would argue there's a difference in that area. Well, you know, when you pull over someone for speeding, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the revenue that's generated from that doesn't go directly to the town, does it? Depends what the charge is. There are certain speeding. things that come. Speeding, no, that would go to the state. Right. Yep. Uh, and for that very reason, because in the old days it would go to the town, right? Correct. And then it became kind of a revenue source, yeah. and you had speed traps all over the place, and mm -hmm. lined up. And we can we can trust the state much better than local government, I'm sure. Well, in a sense, we, <laughs> we segregated the act, the activity from the revenue generation. Correct. And that that was the key there. Yes, and, I would agree. And with and your I assessment. thought when I heard your statement about being concerned about being a revenue generating um, entity. Mm -hmm. That we might be reintroducing this only in the concept of parking tickets, for example. Well, that's uh, why I think we have our right. favorite place that people just love to park and not yeah. pay and display. We just keep our eye on that and generate the maximum revenue kind of thing, you know. I think the important thing is is the maximization of the revenue for a legitimate and for a legitimate action, a legitimate thing that somebody wants to do. They want to come to the beach. They want a place to park, and we 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 deal with that. Um, we've always done the enforcement, say, in the town lots um, that aren't pay, but where we have resident parking only. The police department has always enforced that, either through police officers or we've had civilian enforcement folks over the last couple of years. So in that light, I don't look at as the primary function is revenue generating. That's just mm -hmm. what happens when we take the appropriate lawful action. The parking lots that are pay Somebody pulls in, they pay to park. It, it no, the parking lot, so it's not a concern. Matters not to me who's man in the parking lot, to be parking honest. Parking lot doesn't concern me. And I want to be very really clear, I did not ask for this assignment. I kind of probably I was a little vocal about why am I getting stuck with this. I hate <laughs> my, my, my question of concern, which I thought was really a reflection of, yeah. of what you had said, yeah. was uh, parking tickets re as revenue and the, the possible... Uh, um, ethical challenge that may evolve quite naturally over time. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily after you're long gone, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly not while you're uh, in, in office. Uh, and I see that as a, a real concern, and I just wanted to say I share that concern. Mm -hmm. uh, and this tag and display, or whatever you call it, I can't, can't remember that phrase. Pay and display. Pay and pay and display. display. <laughs> this pay and display system, which is problematic in my opinion, especially for people who have physical problems walking all the way to the place to pay and then walking all the way back to the yep. display. Uh, there are problems physically, but also there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of problems. And you're going to implement it all town-wide, or you're only, only going to isolate certain neighborhoods, and now you're kind of like dividing the town up, all kinds of political issues, which should not be your That's concern. Not, no, I couldn't uh, do that anyhow. But I, I think the public ought to be aware yep. that if the selectmen take on this policy, then they're going to probably be seeking or wanting to avoid a tremendous amount of public feedback on their their uh, particular neighborhood or street. So, with that said, I'll just open it up to the question. Well, I, I think I started the questioning about 50 minutes ago, but thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm really hep on this because I, I'm I'm not. Um, I'm going to go back to what you said, and I don't knowing you, I don't think you asked for this responsibility. And the, the statement you just made was it was all of a sudden now it's under the police department. Something I'm summarizing. Yeah. I'm surprised you mentioned Concord because the majority of the communities, including the state, by the way, which, which made it a law that they had a separate entity that run state parks meters. They wanted a separate group of people. That's another discussion because obviously in this coming year's budget, it's under the police. How much, and I'm going to come back to the Park Enforcement Director, but here's the other concern I have. We sit here and we talk about overwork, stress, doing this and that. You've got a member of your senior management team that as part of his duties this summer <laughs> oversaw parking lots. So, and I don't say this facetiously, did we not have enough to do for Lieutenant Gidley that we had to give him over? And, and that's a legitimate question because why would you inherit, why would you take another operation on? Well, I, uh, Brian, I, I, I don't really believe that's even a question that has to be asked. We all know that we are tasked with a lot and we're doing a lot, but when I'm given an assignment, and I'm told we need to do this. I can not like it all I want, okay? I don't agree with every decision my bosses make. Neither do you. And sometimes you have to voice your opinion in a, an appropriate manner, mm. which I feel I did. But when the key to leadership, and that's what we preach down there, 
I always used to tell the subordinates, tell me the number one difference that Chief Sullivan and I have in the operation of this police department. And they would look, I don't think there are any. I go, you'd be wrong. Because I've been asked to leave his office more than once because I was very boisterous about my disagreements on certain issues. But when my boss tells me, I've heard what you had to say, but this is what we're doing, I go out and I walk down the hallway like it's my idea. Because the reason you have to do that in my line of work is the minute you say, I don't want to do this, it's their idea, mm -hmm. you've now undermined yourself as a leader and you're giving people license not to do their job, and I just won't do that. And I, so when my bosses tell me, and they have the legal right to direct me, I am going to follow the direction, and I am going to do my best for this community to make it work, and I think we did that. I appreciate that. But you're also a taxpayer in this town. And so here's the thing, the conversation that is going to be throughout me for the rest of life. You're going to hear <laughs> a lot about why I bring up wages. <laughs> We need a parking enforcement director. We need two assistant lot supervisors. We need a supervisor. <coughs> I'm telling you, it is, and I'm not, this is, I'm not directing this at you personally, but we've got to be able to stand up and say, all these years when, it, when the revenue has increased under Diana Martin, under Diana Lassonde prior, mm -hmm. under Sue DeMarco, and, and Sue, mm -hmm. Sue uh, Clay before, that's how far I go back. Right. We've made the money. It was under the Recreation Department. The minute Renee was named director, the minute the day, it's the same problem I'm having, and I express this to Selectman Barnes, too, when watching the meetings. I see things come forth, and it, it absolutely equates to the discussion that we're going to have throughout this budget. And this is one of the areas, although it's not, it's not a collective bargaining, it's not a year-round position. But this stuff with wages, based on surveys, and we just automatically give whatever. Why do we need to create a parking lot? And, and maybe Fred can answer this, but I, I, you're not going to convince me that we need a parking lot administration as a separate entity under the a, a police department for 2019, when in fact, as far as I know, and looking at the revenues for the past several years, they were doing great. I do agree with the chairman when he brings up, although, and I have the same concerns Tim does on the, the handicapped or, or people disabled getting to, to pay and display. But then I get nervous when you're talking a half a million dollars and we have tickets. It's like, whoa. I mean, nobody does tickets anymore. I mean, you know, it, however we're doing, collecting. But this is another example where it was presented and I, and I put that in parentheses, and thank you for you, your honesty about, yes, this is the edict. I understand that. You know, you get told you have to do that. But I, when I look at it, somebody says, calls me tomorrow, and they say, Brian, did you say they're proposing, like, what? How many? It just doesn't sit well. And it doesn't matter whether I love the town employees, which I do, and I love the department heads and the administration. we got a great town. But the taxpayers in this town are seeing it as a tol to in totality. And this is another example. I, I never thought in 2018, and you and I were on the beach for many years, that we'd be talking about a parking enforcement director for three months. Is this position three months? Um, I believe that would be roughly the time. So we're going to pay a parking enforcement director 22000 for three months. We pay a supervisor fifteen thousand. Well, I know. Months. Okay, what I'm saying. Okay, but so, the, but the responsibilities have now expanded. Somebody has to oversee it. Now you've made the point. You talked about I used a senior member of my staff to manage that. I, I don't think that sits well with you. It doesn't sit well with me. No, it doesn't. So if we're gonna, if the decision is by the people that make this decision that it's gonna go under the police department then yes, I think this is the right thing to do. We need somebody that's going to oversee the operation that has now consolidated. And I agree. Your assessment was right on, Brian. It's not probably something that Lieutenant Gidley should be handling from now on. I need somebody else to oversee the parking lots and the enforcement operation. So I don't think that's unreasonable. We're talking about... No, but i got to tell you, I'm going to go back to the perception. For the longest department head we had in history until last year, in consecutive years, Diana Martin, mm -hmm. she oversaw an operation that brought in anywhere from 300 to 450 thousand a year, yeah, more. or more, oh and did it. And and I can tell you, Diana, like you, I mean, they're out in the community, worked everywhere. There was never a point where we say, why are we separating this out? And it seems to me 
I can't be convinced, and I'm not convinced from a cost-benefit analysis, and that's what the Budget Committee deals with, how I can, I can't promote this. I, I can't understand, oh, oh. well, it's because, it, in, in, in all fairness, this is why these budgets, one of the, the, the minuscule reasons, among a lot of reasons, why these budgets don't pass. Because people see this and it eats at them and they say, you know, the joke is let's create another position. We've seen it and that's not your issue. That's Mr. Welch's issue, which I'm going to get a lot of a talk when we get to the legal department and town manager's office. This is the, listen, I live in the real, I'm in the community and I can tell you that based on what I'm saying tonight and based what we're going to be talking about, this doesn't sit well. This should have been, and listen, I'm just putting it out there that if you somebody told me a legitimate, valid reason why we had to take the parking administration of our lots out of the recreation department and put it under the police, when you've got enough stuff and all the great work you guys are doing, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I, I can't see this in the form it is now. We just seem to be creating, and you just, was it Mr. Ladd said, Mr. O'Neill's a parking lot director now too? I mean, I think we got all kinds of directors. I, I just think the perception is wrong. That's all I'm going to say on this. I, I'm absolutely against this. And at some time, as we get the final review, I'm going to have a motion on the table. I don't think there was enough cost-benefit analysis done on this. I think it was a, like three other decisions in Regina's defense that came before the board that was a done deal, and it was put. And that's all I'm going to say. So uh, that's great. Thank you, Mr. Warburton. Mr. LeBranch. I'm going to try to keep this <clears throat> brief. <laughs> Um, Christy, do you have a <coughs> revenue figure for the parking lots, an actual number for the parking lots for this year, final figure? I looked in the book and I couldn't find it under. I only have through September. Which, yes, you got which would be as accurate as I need, pretty much. I mean, you're not going to, the little bit that you might have gotten from a couple of concepts isn't going to make much difference. But. Yeah, because there was a little bit of revenue in October. Right. Uh, let's see. At the end of September, the parking lots for the daily rent renew had taken in 500 uh, actually $498,209. 209 Is that up or down from last year? That is uh, slightly over the amounts for last year. the wrong month. I think I dropped all of this when I brought this down. I thought I had grabbed September. Yeah. It's slightly over. Slightly over. Okay, thanks. Yeah. The um, chief, the person that you're going to, the parking enforcement director is seasonal. And that's, you're going to go out and hire somebody. It could end up being Victor Martin. It's a position. We'll do draft the job description in a format, post it, see who's interested. Right. And that person will take care of the parking yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, Dan Gidley will no longer be. The lieutenant in the police department will no longer be charged with that. The director of parking would be answering to me, uh, similar similar to what the uh, animal control officer. Or if I designate my absence, if I'm not there. And then he will as well um, do the hiring for the seasonal parking lot attendees. He will, he well, the will town has a hiring process. Um, okay, we would post he'll it. He'll oversee it. He'll oversee that. Because he's going to be the boss, basically. But there's right. a lot of stuff that goes on with hiring employees in this town, including even the seasonal people mm -hmm. that they have to accomplish. Um, so that's more of a town office function than it is uh, a well, part-time department. I here. guess I, instead of hiring, I should have said he'll be, um, he'll be there. Overseeing, yes. Okay. And the... Um, Now, he would also be putting the money, collecting the money at the end of a, a shift, for instance, putting in a bag and, and bringing it over and putting it into the uh, mm -hmm. deposit safe into the police department. We're not going to discuss that okay, here okay, because that's, that's, that deals that's, with safety issues, okay, if you don't mind. All right, no, no, um, there's a very fine. safe process put in. That's fine. Please, <laughs> let's not talk about it then because that's something. If you want an offline discussion, yeah, yeah, I don't mind sharing, but not here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no, I understand. The, the last thing I want to mention is um, you mentioned at the, uh, the budget, the, the uh, selectmen's meeting about automation, which <coughs> automation, credit card reader, wouldn't that be great? Um, is there 
you, you mentioned that you're looking into it. Is that how far along are you into that? Not deep. I, I, I gotta be honest. I, I go back and forth on the credit card issue. Credit card would great, create availability, but hit for people to use a different way to pay. But on the other hand, we don't really have much problem filling the lots when when it's busy, and people have the cash. And if you use credit cards, then you're paying a fee. So there's pluses and minuses. I think the auditors would love it if we use credit cards. That watch people auditors would money. love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But are we dipping into our revenue because now we have to pay a percentage to a company? I think that needs to be. If we were ever going to go down that path, we need to explore all of those. There are simpler systems. There are the simple systems, and, and Tim, you made a good point about dealing with people that have challenges, having to walk up and down. That in the lots, I can, you know, I always look at, I look out every day at that lot out in front of the PD. How would I make this? If I was going to automate it, how would I do it? And I thought about that too. It's I, I see sometimes with the folks dealing with the state, the kiosks are great, but there is an issue with that. Mm -hmm. If you travel around a lot of the, the automated lots you've seen down in Boston and down that way, it's you pull in, you hit the button, you get the ticket, the gate goes up, and you pay as you come out. Right. So nobody would have to deal with it. So there's a, when you look at parking stuff, you would not believe the number of things you can find online as to how to manage a parking lot. I have an officer that works for me that actually managed uh, the parking lots for a major uh, hospital in Boston, and I, I talk to him a lot about what do you do with this, what do you do with that. So it, it, it's a, it's nothing is set in stone as to where we're going right now. This is what we're proposing. Those other issues we're talking about, there's nobody says we're doing it. it there's an ex exploration I think that's worthwhile to look at. Would it be beneficial to the town and its revenues, and is it going to cause more headache than help? I think we have to look at those things. I, I will say that um, as far as a pay and display, having the ticket and then the thing goes up and then you pay on the way out, mm -hmm. the one of the reasons that that parking lot or your parking lots, there's several of them, mm -hmm. uh, or the village district's parking lot, uh, the ability to be able to continually change the rate during the you could change the rate three times during the same day it's yeah. cloudy in the morning the sun comes out it and then it starts raining later on the price is going to go up and down and, and if it's obviously you're going to maximize the amount of money that you yeah. can and that's why that's why that that's why it's you have 400 almost five hundred thousand dollars in revenue from just the parking lots is because over the years the, the method that they've been using which is to maximize the amount of money that you can get uh, the only you know the only thing is that that automation when you mentioned that credit card reader um, and you know how the auditors would love it and I thought oh boy that would be great I'd, I'd like more information on that myself mm -hmm. because anytime that you're working with $498,209 cash <laughs> That has its own problems, but but we needn't talk about that any further. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chair. you, Mr. LaBranch, Mr. Thank Ladd. What percentage of the revenue is from the parking tickets? You gave the gross numbers, the 500 plus. The majority of the revenue is from the daily lot revenue, mm -hmm. the numbers that I use. Parking lot uh, from parking tickets range from 39,000 all the way up to a high of 66,000 when I compared 2014 through 2018. So roughly 10% or something like that. Okay. And the other part, under the, on page 44, you said the estimated revenues were 423, 825? So that's what we have when we put this book together. It hasn't oh, been changed. Early. Yeah. Okay. And it hasn't changed much? It's up to 498. Oh, what number okay. did I? 498, 209. Okay. Yeah, right. And I think it's just over. I think in the end, I think I want to say it was like 523,000 when I looked at it. Um, just looking at like what had come in in October also, I think we're up to about 523. Okay. But. Thank you. Any other questions, uh, Mr. Lapham? No? Uh, anyone else? No. Okay. We're all set on uh, parking administration or parking enforcement unit, depending on. Uh, flavor of the moment. Very nice. I want to thank the Chief for your help mm -hmm. in us putting together this budget. Thank you. And uh, I also wanted to point out that we did ask for a couple of things from you, I believe. Uh, the uh, weight uh, comparison studies on from NHMA, you're getting that, Christine, right? 
Christy, okay. And your police chief association, you I'll inquire. inquire about that. Yep. And you'll get back to us on that by? If I can, I meet with them Tuesday, so if they give me the green light. So by Thanksgiving? Maybe early. <laughs> well, Thanksgiving will be my drop dead date. Okay. So I'll kill the church <laughs> or you. Or you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd say, uh, Give it a shot. <laughs> you don't mean that literally, of course. No. <laughs> <laughs> The outside agents. And the outside uh, police uh, pay report. Yeah, but Chris, to get you the averages. You want the averages, correct? Well, I I want to know those. I'd like to see more on the average. Like, some could be fifty dollars, could be ninety. I'd like to see what. Well, we get specific bills from each agency. Well, I well, I like to. I mean, the yeah. people who have worked on the beach. I'd like to see the yeah. numbers. Thank you, Chief. So when when do you think we'll be able to get that? That will be coming for you, wouldn't it? By Thanksgiving, I think she said. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. See why I use Thanksgiving? It's a nice, nice date. Because she said so. <laughs> She's always right. Year? Okay, thank you, Chief. Thank you, Deputy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Thanksgiving. Okay, let's all take a deep breath and move on. Uh, any, we have new business as the next item. Any new business? Thank you. There is no new business. Next meeting is on Wednesday of next week, November 14. Wednesday. Wednesday, November 14. All right. Wednesday, next week, yes. November 14. At 7 o'clock. That's an unusual, 7 o'clock is our always time. And, uh, well, Wednesday is not. That's why I'm highlighting it. And so, what budget uh, are we you, you look like you want to say something, yes, Regina. Yes, so I'm going to be at a uh, NHMA annual conference next Wednesday. Again? I, I went to the legislative conference last night. <laughs> oh, we get rid of that. You'll have to pay for it. What's this conference about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Meeting, they got forms for two so days. So you you will miss you will miss being here. I'm yes, sure. but I hope to bring back wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, I declare this meeting. No other new business. Uh, wait, right? uh, November 14th. So the public <laughs> yes, What are we discussing? Hold on, guys. What are we discussing for um, budget review? It's on the. Uh, it's on uh, hit the oh, it's not the schedule, and Wait Wait my minute. memory tells me Department. that we're going to have DPW, uh, DPW okay. and I also I believe that Christy is going to do the budget-wide presentation, Listen, and my memory doesn't recall anything okay. else. I'm glad everybody answered the question I was asking you. Not everybody goes to HamptonBud.com, uh, so we need right. to tell the public, and Mr. <laughs> LeBranch is being rude and walking out of a meeting, which I definitely am against. I think it's unbelievable. We never did that in these boards, and if he's going to play that game, I'm going to play it too. So, very rude, very rude. November 14th, I asked a legitimate question. I gave it to you. Okay, tell the public at home what budget are we doing again on the 14th. Uh, my memory is it's the DPW, and Christy is doing the presentation on the overall budget process, or budget proposal. What happened? By the way, what uh, if I'm sitting in that seat next year, nobody leaves the room until the meeting's officially adjourned. Well, I don't have a gun, and if I did, I wouldn't use it. Well, the then you're not running a meeting right then. No. Oh, I should have a gun to run a meeting? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing to do with guns. We're either to do this, because we push this down here. All of this stuff was... When did you print this out? I don't know. Mike, you print, print out a while ago. He yeah. updated it. Yeah, yeah, it's an old one. So November 14th here, DPW. That's okay. what the schedule says. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure the chairman's going to send out a, another It's email. nothing to do with, it's a public at home oh, once well, and all. Right. That. That's what I'm trying to get at. The main event for next Wednesday is DPW. I, would, I just have one right. comment. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mr. Ladd. And I haven't left the room. <laughs> we know that. Okay. <laughs> well, you're a gentleman, that's why. Next Wednesday is our monthly village district meeting. Next Wednesday. Right, uh, but yours are over by 6.30 <laughs> anyway. No, we had quite a few guests. I've watched some of your meetings. You'll be here by 6.30. Well, you, you may be prophetic or you may be just way off. I can't guarantee that. I can't tell. So will we have a representative if you can't make it? No, every, all our representatives are commissioners by definition. Well, and you know what? That's that's a uh, Regina. You're all coming next way, week. Yeah. Because yeah. that's this is I a big question. If we have DPW and we're going to be missing two people, that's that's not that's the biggest. Three. Budget. That's the biggest. Budget in here town. We need to change the date then. As I'll be at that meeting. Well, uh, you're not on the board, dear. <laughs> no, I am not. But I 
Hold on a second, guys. General I want to be clear. November 14th, Wednesday, has been on the schedule since I agree. May. Yeah. No one has objected. I brought up the schedule in every meeting. Correct. All right? Correct. So I'm I don't want to hear about any of this schedule conflict stuff. Whoever shows up, shows up. Those who don't, don't. Fair enough. Fine. Thank you. So we're going to do a five and a half million dollar budget with five people? Yeah, well, if they're all at-large elected members, that's a great thing, don't you think? Well, I understand that. I right? guess us statutorily representative members of some lesser member? No, I simply said that it's a great thing with all elected members showing up. Yeah. That's all I said. I I knew you would, Brian. Thank you, Brian. I, I know we could count on you. I knew we could count on you. Uh, it's to, uh, I'll be here. Is there any other closing wisdom that we wish to, to uh, disclose? I'll dial in if you really want. Um, for three hours. As long as the... You've been uh, for selectmen before. I know you have that. I don't know how you can be in the conference and in this meeting at the same time. The good places in Manchester, I'll tell you what it's like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, if you're going to be done there, you'll, be, you'll have time to drive down here. So, I mean, uh, whatever. Oh, it's, I'm saying that I would definitely we, be here. Well, that's what, she, back, that's what she's got Wednesday, the right I'm idea. I'm not coming back till Thursday. That's right. Well, you can come back Wednesday night. And then i got to be back in Manchester at 8.30. No. Anyway, we can deal. We can deal with your desire for a telephonic uh, inter interface uh, offline, okay? What is that? Telephone? Telephone. Oh, very good. Yeah. You're good enough for each other. That's that's quite that's useful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing wrong with this. No, I understand. I think I'll see what the selectmen rep will come. And who is is that Mary Louise? Oh, yeah, God. probably. Mm. Excellent. That's a good idea. We are adjourned. Thank you. You're correct about that. You don't even need a motion for that. I do agree with you on that. Oh, by the way, Brian. <laughs>